Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, the Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1938 Ford hot rod pickup running for the first time in who knows how long. So the story on this one was, it was on a Steffes auction up by Harlstead, Kelstead, the same town that that uh, Model T Roadster came from. So anyway, a bunch of people told me about this auction, local people, and so yeah, we're going to go, we, we ended up, I don't know if you guys know how online auctions work, but if you bid in like the last three minutes, it bumps it up another three minutes longer. So I played a 40 minute waiting game with somebody else last night. I'd bid it and then he'd bid it and then I'd bid it. So here's the deal, there's two lots that had to go together. There's like three, there's three 38 Ford pickups, 38, nine. They're all kind of the same. This really good pickup, but it's missing the hood and the hood sides and the grill and the rear fenders and the tailgate. All that stuff was on another auction. So. I'd bid on that one and then I'd win, be winning it and then he'd be winning that one and I don't know, it was just a nightmare, waiting game, drug on forever. Probably paid too much money but it's super complete. It looks super nice. It's got a small block Chevy in it so should be able to get it running and if not, I'll just drop another small block Chevy in it and we'll have a super easy hot rod because, you know, we needed another project around here. Anyway, it's about a two hour drive. Mojo. Mrs. Mojo sent some goodies, so we're gonna take those with. And Mojo is gonna stay here and put an exhaust manifold on White Lightning. I don't blame him, because uh, we gotta drive through the big city. And I gotta pick up some hand railing in the big city, because in order to meet the FHA loan in my house, so I can sell that in town, I gotta have hand railing. So I'm gonna pick that up. But yeah, I'm super excited about this thing. 38.9 Ford pickups are not my favorite, but this thing's like 85 years old, so you don't find anything that cool, that complete that local-ish very often. So, Randy and Charles Arstead collectible auction. Halstead, Minnesota. Halstead. I think Carlstead. Is that even a town in Minnesota? Anyway, we're taking the uh, 8.1 gas guzzler tow pig in the big trailer. That way we can get all the fenders and body parts inside. You'll see when we get there, but I'm excited. Let's do this. Well, we're about Two miles away, beet harvest is in full swing. There's beet trucks everywhere. And I forget what they call these beet loader, auger, combiner, harvester things coming down the road. And that thing takes up some real estate. So yeah, you get over here in the Red River Valley, there's some beets around. It's an Amity brand. I don't know what they call those things. But yeah, beets, it's a weird crop. That's where sugar comes from, Duff. I suppose that's why they call them sugar beets, but they, they top them, so they go mow them first like that, and then, and then that thing comes and picks them out of the ground and dumps them in the truck. And I don't know, it's a weird deal. And then they drop them off in places like this. It's, I don't know. I've never really watched, I'd like to, Drink beer and watch somebody uh, harvest sugar beets sometime. But not today. We got junk to get. It's, it's way different than combine and corn or beans or wheat that we're used to. Whole different animal. All right. But uh, a lot of people do part time work driving truck for these guys and make a whole bunch of money. Never done it though. All right. We'll uh, see you at a pickup hopefully in a couple of minutes. Leaves are changing. It's gorgeous up here. Yeah, believe it or not, we got trees around here. Who would have thunk Duff? It's uh, flat for 100 million miles, so it looks like near the Red River Valley. Well, here we are. Nice little farmstead. Of course, this guy is right in the way where I gotta go. But at least he's got a tilt bed trailer, so maybe he'll uh, make her quick. Oh, we can drive around in front of him. But yeah, a couple 38s, nines, whatever. I think we checked the grills and they're 39s. Oh, there's that old Bobcat. It's like one of the first production made Bobcats. I went for like 4,000 bucks. Yeah, all kinds of good stuff. I think it's an old Studebaker 6x6 boom truck. Needs an engine. Oh, he's a blue plater. He knows what he's doing. It's going to be rusty. All right, let's let that guy do his thing. And I'll go show what else is here. These are something for, I don't know, pulling weeds or something and potatoes. 
Well, there's our fenders and hood sides and a couple odds and ends here. This is that needle, I don't know, we call them three wheelers, but clearly it's four little Wisconsin engines. Some weights at the back. Pretty crude. You probably remember running this thing though, huh? <laughs> it, was... never had any, it didn't have any power. It beat the hell out of shoveling, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it was a, a great thing at the time, you know. And that was the very first thing that we did was we bought a, rig, a real... Uh, a skid steer? A skid yeah. Steer. This was a skid steer. It had another axle on it. And I have no idea why they put this caster wheel on. I think it was so it would turn better on right. the hip, you know. Oh, and it's on propane, even. Well, it was in the potato warehouse. So oh, anyway. that explains why it's in such good shape. Uh, yeah. No, it's been inside. No, it's. Oh yeah. It's Got pushed inside. <laughs> Ran when parked, right? Got pushed inside and forgot about. So, did you guys build these rogue? No, that I, I went with the hire man. We went out to Montana and got this. And. Uh, didn't have the top on it. Oh, that, that was your guys' addition. Yeah, because we wanted some shade. It was so hot right now. The, um, the guy that made it, his name is on it there. Gotcha. I don't know where, Melvin something. Melvin Love, Three Forks, Montana. <coughs> yeah, he built it. So you guys bought it brand new then? Yeah, yeah, he built it for us. Oh. We went and got it. And it was made to, you had one row here and then there was a row of potatoes here, live potatoes here, and then, so it, it fit the rows. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I never drove that all up. many, many miles. What would you guys do with that boom truck? Anything and everything, or did it have a specific? Uh, we, um, we, we took grain boxes off and put potato boxes on the trucks. That was before we had uh, three-way boxes. Oh, so you'd swap it out yeah, each they, season. That's right. Yeah, we put potato boxes on. And then they came with three-way boxes, grain, sugar beets, or potatoes. You know, hopper bottom. Then you really had something. Well, yeah, that, that, that's what they all got switched. That's the way they all original look. That's, that's an original potato box? Yeah. Or that's original three-way? No, that's an original potato box. Potato box on that. Federal. Only for potatoes. <laughs> I didn't see that black Ford back there on the auction. That one? Yeah. Uh, that's my son's keeping it. Oh. It's a 69. He gets, he gets to keep a couple, huh? <laughs> you said something about a project back in the trees or whatever. Is there something you didn't drag out? There's a 35 6 Ford rear end underneath this guy. That's pretty cool. Got the old Ford transmission, and then they put a pulley on the input shaft. Well, I asked him if they had any other goodies, and he said, Yeah, go back in the trees. So. He's going to help that other gentleman load up, and uh, we're going to go back in the trees here. Oh man, 65 Ford wagon, looks like a 54 Ford truck up there, looks like a KB International and a 48 to 52 Ford truck, 53 to 56 Ford truck, and some big old railroad beams, but he said head over this way. And there's about uh, 20 cars in there. Great big old International. I would imagine this has got a... Oh, it does have a V6 in it. I'm going to say a diesel. It's got the 6 Magnum in it. Can you imagine that? Going to your local truck dealer and be like, Yeah, give me the one with the 6 cylinder. And everybody else has got a V8. There's a Dodge over there. It's like a couple of Minneapolis's and a Case. Looks like some Case harvesters. This must have been a, quite the operation. Volkswagen Beetle with a crane cam sticker in it. And sitting on a 51 or 52 Ford pickup. Looks like it's all there, the pickup is. Looks like a 54 Ford car. 58 Ford wagon. Oh, that's cool. She's uh, grown in pretty good though. Looks like an early 50s, late 40s Dodge, sedan, maybe Plymouth, international truck, a couple of 
Is that a Cadillac? No, it's Plymouth. There's a 56 Ford truck. Look at that hood scoop. 59 Chevy wagon. There's the car that the uh, engine came out of for this thing, I bet. 56 cab. If I have a classic car, Ryan would uh, get some tight pants over that. I think that's a DeSoto next to it. Pink with a black top. Another F1 over there. Those big job hood scoops. Freaking sweet. Oh, it's even got the big job T700 emblems on it. Continuing on. Arm equipment. Is that a convertible? 4648 Plymouth, or is the top just cut off? Floor pan out of a Volkswagen. Looks like, hard to tell. Almost looks like a factory convertible though. Back half's been cut off though. And then a 47 to 53 Chevy truck cab. That's some pretty cool stuff here. We'll have to see if we can't strike up a deal and drag more stuff home. Just so we don't need, there's a lot of stuff back here. Holy buckets, you'd never know. No 34 Ford Roadsters. Oh, it's a 56 Ford, way off. She's a Brookwood. Oh man, it's gotta be a Victoria too. Cause we already got one of those. And of course the roof is schmucked up. But it's actually got a lot of pieces that ours could use. All right, I think we saw, well, we definitely didn't see it all, but let's go get loaded up. Head her for the hills. Better show you these cars on the way back. 51, 52 truck, V8. I think it's a 48. That one's got a six cylinder in it. 46 to 48 Ford. Four door sedan. That was sitting inside, obviously. Little Model A dune buggy deal. 3031. 51 or 52 Ford. Three quarter ton. Cool old uh, dent side service truck. He's actually pretty nice. And then there was that 56 truck over there and a GMC truck. And the Ford cab over was pretty neat, went pretty reasonable too. I don't know what kind of goodies they threw away. Looks like the old welder got scrapped. Hello, boy. Last I saw was at like 700 bucks. All right, we better grab our cute little air cleaner. Oh, it is kind of sitting well. So here's the deal, guys. Uh, I got a bunch of the information from the gentleman who owned it. So while we're loading this thing up, Chin's gonna overlay what that guy told us about this thing, who we got it from, and the history on it while we're loading this thing up, because it should go pretty quick. And it's better than music. Listen, old timers, tell us the history of this um, thing. It came from, the guy owned it. Uh, his name was Melvin Davison. And I think it was his main farm pickup. Okay. okay. And then he and my dad brought it home and it was sitting here when I got home from school. And so I drove it around for a while. I had, I was running a trap line at that time. And so I, but it, you know, it had a flat head and there was no heater. And it was, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't very good. But, and then, uh, so then I started working on it when I was about 16 because it had something to do. So it's got a, I think, I think it's got a 283 in it, and I can't remember if I bought it or not. Um, I, I just don't recall. I know it's got a high left, high left cam in it. Okay. I just can't remember. You don't, what, you you got the engine out of? Do you remember? You just bought it uh, from somebody? 59 somewhere? Chevrolet. Okay, yeah. so it's a 283 then? Yeah, it's 283. All right. Did you ever get it going, or? Oh, yeah. I oh, drove it, yeah. You had a lot of fun in her yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, but I it's just, it just, just gotcha. never got I just never got went to college and I just never got back to it. Yeah. So, so you so, so it sat in the shed for fifty years. And I did my son moved out here and he wants all the buildings empty and he wants to tear them down. Oh really? Yeah, because they, they're too expensive to maintain. And so 
So, and a lot of this stuff belongs to my brother. And he, he had his auction sale here in 1996. And what he couldn't part with got pushed in that shed. <laughs> And, so and this I, is this is after the second auction or the first auction then. Oh yeah, he had a, the whole yard was full. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And this was so this a lot of you know the potato equipment and stuff was his then. Yeah, it got held over. Yeah. So where you, did? So you got all the pallets. Yeah. Too. Do you know where the rear fenders went that were on that thing or the black tailgate or the black rear fenders? Uh no, I um I, I really don't. <laughs> When did you have it running last? I don't know what happened to the fenders. Oh, it's a long time ago. The hood is here. Right. Uh, and, and the side panels. Yep, and then the grill. The side panels are here. These are the side panels. And that's the grill for that one. Right, yep. That, the grill belongs maybe with one of those. Sure. Um, I don't, I, I'm not sure. There were the, I, I got another project out in the woods out there that some of this stuff might have come from, but um, so did you had it all together on the road? Then you took it apart again and then painted the frame, or did you paint the frame the first it, time? It was all out. Oh. Yeah, I had it. I had it. I everything was on. Right. Did, did you get it going after you had the frame painted and oh, stuff? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then I just lost track. <laughs> And then you must have picked up a few parts pickups along the way. Yeah, I kept buying stuff. Yeah, I'm thinking that when I kept putting it together. So it's got a 46. So it's got a 46 uh, coupe rear ender, and so I shortened the, the drive shaft cylinder. They're interchangeable, you know. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. How they just bolt on that torque tube? Yeah. The 38 Ford pickup is shorter, is shorter than the, uh, than the coupe. Yeah, this is shorter than the coupe. And so I took the coupe tube off and then you can, there's a joint in there. You take it off, there's a joint there and you can put the shorter one in. And so that's what's, so it's got the, it's got the 38. I had, there was a guy that was working for us that was an old timer and he knew all this stuff. Sure. And, uh, and so, so that's what's in there, and I, and I don't know what happened to the... Do you put the 46 rear end in it to get the smaller bolt pattern for the different wheels, or...? I wanted to have something that I could... Yes, yes, because it had mechanical brakes. Okay. Just, just like... So to get the hydraulic brakes, yeah. yeah. Just like this. It's got mechanical brakes with cables, and they were awful. There was, <laughs> there was nothing there. And so... You're right, and then, you, then the wide five wheels, you... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that, that, so that's how come it ended up with those wheels on. I took the front end off of that 46 coupe, and the torsions were longer, but I, we were able to uh, find all this stuff was interchangeable. Oh yeah, that's the beauty of Ford back then at all. All right, the gentleman who bought the second nicest pickup, he uh, was the one who bid me up on this. I don't know where he's going, he's driving away. But anyway, he uh, is not going to use the rear end. I said, I'll give you some money for it. So we're going to hopefully connect here and load it on the back of the trailer. Or he's just going to drive off with my money. We got back late last night. Looks like everything stayed on the trailer. Duff made sure it was all tied down real good. We got a flat tire, tried pumping it up. It's uh, not taking air and you know how much I hate that. So we'll just, since it's up high, easy to get at, we're gonna jack that thing up and check out the tube and either put a new tube in it or patch the tube and then we'll roll her off the trailer, put her on the hoist and we'll take a look at this hot rod 1938 Ford. Duff's just prowling the old tow pig. I think he enjoys the road trips more than anything. No, you're not gonna suck start that 8.1. Ain't gonna do it. Too much compressions. It's windy out there, the old Goonie. Never say die or never say never. Goonies, Goonies never say die. 
flag's really whipping in the wind today. So the old tube had a few too many patches in it for me to want to fix it and the leak was right by the valve stem so we decided to opt for a new one really breaking the bank here but look at this this is an atlas grip safe made in usa she's a 616 model so six times two is 12 plus 16 is 28 inch tall tire yeah Made in the USA, everything, all the tires these days are Vietnam, Korea, or Brazil, or Thailand. USA tires are pretty hard to find anymore. USA anything is hard to find anymore. All right, hey, it even rolls. So that's the beauty of storing things with tires that hold air in them keeps the brakes and everything out of the dirt. And I don't know if this thing was in a concrete floor building or not, but when you keep it out of the dirt, the brakes don't get seized up, the bearings don't get seized up, the oil pan doesn't rust out, and then they roll. Real good stuff, because we always like our stuff to roll. Doesn't matter how hot garbagey it looks, but wheels and tires and stance make or break them. And uh, if you got something sitting kitty wampus, caddy wampus, however you want to call it, because you got a flat tire in one corner, it looks like hot garbage. Or if it's all four tires, or heaven forbid if it's sitting on blocks, you know. The neighbors love looking at stuff like that. I'm glad we don't have neighbors. All right, let's get this thing uh, unloaded and get her on the lift. Check out the bottom side. Go from there. Probably the first time this thing's ever been on a lift. Who knows? What, maybe they had like one of those single post ones in the concrete back in the day that was powered by air that they used like a broomstick to prop in place to hold it up so it didn't fall on your head. Yeah, those things are sketchy, but they beat laying on your back. It's not very often we take a look at the bottom side before we take a look at the top side, but we're mixing it up around here, you know? I like to keep you guessing. So I did notice this when I was tying it down. They added on these tube shocks. There should be a friction shock that clamps on to that ball right there and then came off the frame and had like a lever arm. But anyway, those didn't work real great and then they'd get stiff and they would break and then they were no good. So somebody, I don't know if they had a kit or what was going on here. It looks like that boss was already there. I don't know what that would have been for. But anyway, what they did is they mounted a tube shock to it in uh, what I would call upside down. And then they welded a tab up here, but unfortunately they cut this lip off. They did that after the frame was painted red. But you'd see by the angle that that thing was going up and down from full extension to full collapse and that suspension, that thing's probably gonna move about three quarters of an inch. So they were not doing much, but at least we'll gain a nice collection of half inch washers out of the deal. I don't know if you heard, but this gentleman said that they got this thing from his dad, bought it from the neighbor. I think he said his name was Vernon and got it for 60 bucks. So they came out all right on this deal. 
investment, but 60 bucks back in the probably 1960s or 50s was a lot more than it is now because inflation isn't real. Uh, anyway, I guess they bombed it around with it for a flathead a little bit and then they did what you see here and he said, yeah, you had it running. So I guess they probably had it all apart, painted it red. They put uh, brakes off of 46 Ford, so they got rid of the wide five brakes and they got rid of the ugly cable mechanical brakes and went to hydraulics. So uh, yeah, and then they got an adapter for the small block. Small blocks out of a 59 Chevy station wagon and uh, he couldn't remember if it was rebuilt or not, but I guess it's got a big cam in it. So she's a real hot rod. All right, continuing on. So we got our banjo rear end, typical banjo. It's all greasy, but that just means it's got fluid in it. So I like that. Like I said, hydraulic backing plates. I don't know if they put the whole, I think he said they put the whole rear end in here. Looks like they might even put uh, bushings in there. Usually those are all hoisted. Yeah, these frames, it's, it's really common for them to rot out right in here. Dirt comes up in here, gets between these two layers of metal, this guy and this outside one, and they rot out. So super solid there. It's always worse on the passenger side. Yeah, you can see it. The rust just barely peeking through, and you can see it splitting here. This isn't bad, but we should probably get a pressure washer and clean all that dirt and stuff out of there before it gets any worse. And then I think he said they used the torque tube off the pickup because the 46 car would have been a different length. Looks like we got ourselves a little electric, little, I mean, a ginormous clickety-clack electric fuel pump. I think you got to run that because he's got Hurst engine mounts and those Hurst engine mounts go where the mechanical fuel pump would be. So you got to run one of these guys, typically. I'm guessing there was more exhaust at one point. Exhaust looks like it's in good shape, what's there. But she would have been loud there's nothing on the other side he did say he went off to college and that's you know probably when this project came apart the second time you know he had it all together and running allegedly and he probably took it all apart and was gonna do it up better and then college and jobs and kids and life got in the way so that's where uh, we came in so it looks like they welded a little tab here for the hydraulic brake hose and they made this bracket here for the hydraulic brakes and they got this little linkage here coming off of the pedal which really the way to do it right the old-fashioned way is you get a set of pedals out of a 39 which is uh got hydraulic brakes is the last year of the mechanical brakes and that should just pretty much bolt right in and then you could bolt this same master cylinder on there and then you don't have to have all this stuff but we'll see maybe that stuff will work just fine probably gonna need some new hoses and wheel cylinders and tires everything rubber related fuel hoses and that type of stuff he's got a little fuel tank mounted in the bed the original tank would have been behind the rear axle there it's got a adapter here that goes from the small block chevy to the well i guess it would be the 38 ford transmission unless to use a, a different one on there i don't know if i can see the manufacturer anything on there oh man she's got an old 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 hastings spin on filter this 59 would have been a cartridge style, so it's got the aluminum adapter in there to go a spin-on style. So that's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, I can't see only the adapter manufacturers. Maybe we'll be able to see it from the top. Also noted this when I was tying it down. That oil pan must have got in the way of his drag link. So they sectioned that oil pan and slid her up, and it looks like it was all gas welded together. It even looks like they gas welded it up there. So that's freaking awesome. It's cool seeing that stuff. And then they made their own plate for the uh, adapter to keep all the uh, crumb out of there. It is a later block. It does have the mounting brackets for ears on the side of the block. I think the earlier ones, like 55 to 57, only have the front mounts. They don't have these three bosses there. You can see the block off plate for the fuel pump. Nice thin aluminum one. That's pretty neat as well. That's pretty neat. Cross steer, they went to that in 35. And then that's when they went to the spring in front of the axle in 35 as well. I don't know what these spring wrap doohickeys are all about. I've never seen one of the grease circ on it before. I don't know if that's factory or aftermarket, but is what it is. We got ourselves some coilover shocks. They did a pretty nice job of making these shock mounts. Yeah, it's kind of crude mounted to the axle. But up top, it ain't so bad. Again, hydraulic brakes up front. It looks like they're using, yeah, that's a, the 46 spindles. I wonder if they use the whole axle out of the 46 car. But yeah, those are 46 
or 42 to 48 Ford spindles and brakes and everything, which they could have adapted it to the other spindles, I believe. There's the Hurst engine mount. Usually they're stamped Hurst right in one of those spots. And then some of these Hurst, you had to have this little horseshoe adapter to space them up just a little bit. We got those. I'm guessing you got them out of some catalog back in the day. Flexi hose. Not excited about that. It looks like somebody uh, punched our radiator there. That doesn't look like the stock radiator. Well, clearly, because it would have two outlets on the bottom for a flathead. Looks like that got dinged up a little bit, so we're gonna find a radiator. I wonder if that's out of that 59, or maybe it's like a Tri-5 Chevy. We'll have to do a little research, but we're gonna need a radiator before we go on the road. And then I don't know if they put these push bars on just for shoving it around later on, or we'll have to see when we get the bottom of the grill, the chin, in place see if it's cut out for this or not i don't really like these so hopefully they go away we're missing the headlights it looks like they got a conversion bracket in there to go to a sealed beam so a lot of upgrades i'm guessing it was 12 volts because who would run a small block chevy was set up for 12 volts on six but we shall find out but otherwise oh yeah you can see all that gas welding on that fender lip all the cool stuff I hate red paint, in case you didn't know, so I'm not really excited about the chassis being red. I don't know why you couldn't have painted it black. Even the wood between the cab and the frame, all in good shape, and then they mount it with these uh, long bolts with springs so that everything can flex and go up and down. Yeah, you can see they had the fenders, fenders off and they got some new hardware on it. These should have been uh, fine thread bolts from the factory, and they always snap off. All right, let's get her set down on the ground. Let's see how it goes. Oh, they did uh, trim out the cross member. Oh, maybe a little bit to uh, run dual exhaust through there. Who knows? Maybe they snuck her out the middle. Maybe they dumped it out the side. We may never know. But yeah, everything looks good. Wood bed floor. That would have been access for your uh, fuel sending unit through the bed floor. It was wood, and then they had steel on top of it. And I think they have steel diamond plate on top of that. Not factory stuff, but pretty good. I wonder what the old chin is up to in the double D today. Burning dinosaurs, clearly. Look what we found in the scrap pile. The ball bearing scooter. It's even got white spokes on it. Mojo said fuel prices are too high, so he's gonna ride it to and from work. What do you think, Duff? We'll go for a ride on it? It's got the uh, V treads. Oh, it's got a brake even. Woo! She's low mileage. We're gonna have to do a little dinging on the horn. Got an engine. It's got a stand too. So yeah. yeah, we're gonna have to put a uh, one of those slow moving signs on the back, an SMV or uh, the the road worker. Just have it like on straps to so get it on your back. One of those one of those yellow jackets that you can get at Trav's Outfitters for road construction workers. <laughs> <laughs> no, whatever. You got imagination too. Okay. Look at that front fender. Those are hot rod. Yeah, I don't know uh, how well built it. If you taco it in the middle, I'll be a little disappointed, even though it was free. Be a cool wall hanger. We could make an entire episode of hanging that on the wall like that. That one guy in uh, Pot County. Oh, it even it even comes with uh, some new friends. Honeycombs. Duff, do you like bees? No, not so much. So I remember some water dripping on the trailer coming from somewhere in the drivetrain. It wasn't coming from the radiator, so we're gonna pull some drain plugs on everything. Transmission, differential, engine. See if we can figure out where that water was coming from. Maybe it was just pooled up somewhere in the frame rail or cross member, but we're gonna double check since we got her up in the air. We may as well. Seemed like a good idea to you, pal. He doesn't care, he just wants to go for it. Oh, oh my, oh my. That's why the pan was sectioned uh, to clear this drag link. Oh, look at this. Big old hoop bent in her there. And then they got that huge bend in the tie rod end. I do not like that. Wowza. All right, let's just uh, pretend like we never saw that, I guess. We're just gonna crack this a little bit if there's water in there or coolant. It should be at the bottom of the pan. 
I don't know where water would have got into the engine. I mean, with no carburetor on it. Ooh, ooh. If that's oil, it's pretty thin. Maybe it's marble, maybe it's diesel, whatever it is. Oh, well, she's done running out of there. It's uh, not good. Let's get that out of there. Let's just drain it all. Treat her right, and we'll have some oil to burn this winter to keep us warm anyway. I'm sure it's gonna blast and hit that drag link and spray everywhere. Oh, it actually looks really, really clean. I'm sure it's old and broken down just like the rest of us, but good time to change it, I guess. Man, we should have captured that and burned it in something else. Kind of got a diesel fuel hint to it. I guess I'm not opposed to that either. I'm gonna go ahead and crack this one on the transmission here and see if any water comes out of that. 80, 90, pff, that stuff never goes bad, so we'll see. Oh, put that in there. There we go. I'm just gonna crack her just a little bit. Sometimes water will run down the shifter. Yep, there's our water. It'll run down the shift knob and into the transmission. That oil looks really good, but there was some water in the bottom. Remind me to uh, fill that back up. That oil looked like brand new though. So that's a good sign. Hopefully there wasn't enough water in there to freeze and crack the case. I don't know. I hope not. Put a little pipe dope on there so hopefully she don't leak. Because I hate leaks. Puddles on my freaking shop floor almost as much as I do. Flat tires. Problem is everything in the freaking fleet leaks. All right, let's go back to the old diffy. So for this guy, I think we just need a 3 ace ratchet. There's your fill, and there's your drain. Now, if I were a betting man, I bet this has got brand new 8090 in it as well. Hopefully no water runs out. Not there yet. Oh. Yep, we got water. God dang it. Ooh. Ooh, that was some... Real muddy stuff in there at the bottom, too. Probably a good thing we're changing this. Oh, you nasty. Oh, that's nasty. Again, it looks like really fresh oil, but I think there was just some sludge sitting at the bottom. A lot of times on these banjos, the axle tubes here, or on any axle actually, but these uh, banjo axle tubes are welded on the top side. It's a uh, flat metal that's rolled and then it's welded on the top. When we get full of water, it'll split that weld. And that's actually that 39 parts or axle that we bought from that other gentleman at, from the auction. That thing is split because it's been filled full of water, unfortunately. So there's definitely some water in the drivetrain of this thing. All right, go to your home. There you go. Are you too good for your home? Answer me! Maybe that plug doesn't go there? Are they different? Shouldn't be. Oh, cheese and rice. Yeah, because why wouldn't it drop into the bucket? Stupid stuff like this is the reason I drink. Don't worry though, I don't have to reach into the uh, icky abyss. I got my magnetic screwdriver that's gonna dive in there. Get yours at Mordski.com. Got it. Usually in instances like this, I get some lighter oil and I'll run it in there for, you know, an oil change and then flush it out. Just to kind of, you know, douche the other crud out of there. When your situation down south makes him breathe through his mouth, Summer's Eve! Douche! But, pretty clean, we'll clean it out of there, right? Oh, yeah. All the nastiness. Come on now, don't get in my eye. It's like after eating Taco Bell for three days straight. Okay, good enough for the girls we go with. We'll let her drip dry. Let's go put the drain plug in the engine. And then, let's uh, 
See if we can't get this thing to turn over. Maybe we'll get to pull the plugs. I don't know. Speaking of the spark plugs, we still got overspray on them. She's got a fresh overhaul. Zip this guy in, tighten her up with our 7 8 inch wrench. Come on now. The good news is you, you uh, got this steering shaft in the way so you can't put an impact on it. So the old Jiffy Lube guy. Is Jiffy Lube still a thing? I don't know. I guess I don't go to the big city off and off. I'm sure it is. I bet the oil changes aren't 19 bucks anymore though. There we go. Here's our latest debacle. We can't get at the flywheel because of the design of that adapter and then that shield that goes over the front. And there's no bolt that holds the harmonic balancer. Oh, is this one threaded? It might be. There's no bolt in there. No, it ain't threaded. These early ones are just press on. So we're gonna have to find some way to grab onto that and turn it over. So we could grab the fan blade and see what happens. I don't have much hope seeing all that water that was in there, but we'll see. Here goes nothing. Oh boy. Mel's just slipping. Oh. Never fear, we got the old MIT, M I T T, the make it turn tool. It does small block Chevys and I think Mopars. I don't know. Should be the same. Glad I saved this because I save everything. Who am I kidding? All right, let's get these serious bolts out of here. Maybe get that pulley out of the way. Who knows? Stay tuned. Too tight. Somebody cross in this one or what? Got ourselves some longer three aces fine thread hardware. This is the old mitts a little bit thicker than the stock short water pump bully. Sprayed some looby dooby in there. Coil, of course. And of course, this hole isn't drilled perfectly because we don't do anything perfect around here. Was nothing. What size is that? 15 sixteenths? All right, let's see if we can't shear the keyway off like we're so good at doing. Oh, yeah! Oh, no. Just turn on. Oh, yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. We're not fighting it, so no need for lube yet. We're going in dry. Heck yeah. I think we got ourselves a winner. Please don't be a valve that just snapped off on a kiss the piston. Near compression building. Let's go backwards. I think we're golden, kids. I didn't hear too many strange noises. We might be spinning a filter on. Prime an oil pump. How about that? How about that? Gotta love small block Chevys. And you gotta love stuff that was stored inside. They said this thing sat in that barn ever since they gave up on the project 40 years ago. Heck yeah. I'm gonna go grab a filter. I think we'll grab a B6 Baldwin. Because we got a whole gross of them. I'm not really sure here, but when we pull this filter off, if it's not plumb full of oil, it might tell us that this thing was never actually fired up after it was set back together. They could have 
Unless they dumped it in and filled it all the way to the top. Oh, for jeez on rice. I hate to even damage that filler because it's so cool with the old Hastings guy on it. But she's on there real good. And there's not a lot of real estate. But it's tight to this bell on me. <laughs> and if we got to punch a hole in it with a screwdriver, we're not going to know how much uh, oil was in there because it's all going to drain out. Well, we didn't damage it too much to get a socket on. There we go. Conveniently, it's the same socket as I use on my 5.9 Cummins. There we go. Because I'm thinking if it didn't run, it shouldn't be full, full to the brim. And obviously, there's no way that this was probably run she's full of the brim but look at how clean that stuff is it's like brand new you know that golden goodness no doubt that oil came from a cardboard jar now yeah, there's a little bit of residue in there on that filter so i'm guessing it was run we got our baldwin b6 full of some new Mystery oil, not actual marble mystery oil, but some bulk something or other. I don't know. Oh, nice red filter matches our nice red frame and engine. There we go. Good enough. I suppose we should fill this rear end and transmission because even if we don't get this thing running with this engine, we'll put a different one in it. So let's do that. Good call, Duff. Put the uh, drain plug in first. I'd move the bucket out of the way so I don't drop it in there, but I feel like we're gonna need it there for when we start filling and we get it overflowing. You know, just plan it ahead. Sometimes laziness pays off. Usually not though. Procrastinators unite tomorrow. Great bulk 8090 going in. I'm afraid if you put synthetic in one of these, it would just run out everywhere because these things weren't sealed up real tight. And they don't hold much. Missed the bucket at least. <clears throat> Some more worthless knowledge. You can grease the leaf spring right in the center here. There's one on the side. In the torque tube, it's got it's kind of like a hanger bearing in the middle here that you're supposed to grease as well. That I'm sure probably hasn't been greased in many many miles when it was still on the road because nobody ever did. All right, let's pull our fuel plug out up here. Get the transmission topped off with the same 8090. A lot of service work on these things. There's also grease points for the. Uh, clutch shift shaft assembly as well and you're supposed to put corn head grease in the old uh, steering box up there and there's another grease there on the uh, clutch pedal and there's probably one for the brake pedal too maybe not let's get a closer look at this thing now that she's on the ground got everything emptied out of it pretty much and it is not a disappointment yes I know Duff I am an utter disappointment no offense to cows with udders. So here's the tailgate we got. You can see she's been reworked. Tailgates always get beat to crap. It's pretty common here. When guys will cut a door in there for grain, they'd fill them up with grain and then they'd pull the chute and get most of it out. But this is one of the years that Ford had the V8 script in the tailgate. I don't think this was off this pickup originally, but it's better than nothing. But maybe it is because that box kind of has that color. Maybe they spray painted this thing at one time. Maybe. I was starting to think it was an original black pickup, but maybe it was this tannish, greenish, who knows-ish. Well, you can see they put the diamond plate on the floor. Uh, it's just held in by a couple of bolts, so we can take that out of there and put a standard floor in it. Really nice bedsides. You know, they got a couple of whammies in it. I'm guessing that's a Minneapolis Moline fuel tank off of a some piece of equipment i'm guessing not a tractor usually they were kind of styled but i don't know a ton about minneapolis's we are missing the freaking bumpers so 
maybe we will have to uh, come across those these pickups look pretty good without them too though i didn't find any black rear fenders i got three more rear fenders in the pickup but you can see just what happens to uh rear fenders big stretch stuff big stretch yeah stretch her all out they don't pull nothing but that's where the fuel filler neck should be it's i don't know opened up like a tuna can and then it was cracked there and they gas welded it but yeah i think that was the worst of the uh lefts hopefully the other one is significantly better we are missing one beauty ring but they're all there otherwise three out of the four ain't bad uh those atlas grip safes are all the way around so somebody put new tires on this thing at one point or had four matching tires anyway which is says a lot you know check her out Duff. he says there's no seat to have a bunch of mice in it they had her all cleaned up and painted and pretty nice in here. Look, it's even got the cardboard headliner and insulation or whatever you want to call it. Sound deadener. This is a great spot for mice to make mouse houses and then they get rotten out. This would have been the second year of the V-butt windshield. It's got this aftermarket steering wheel with the wood on there. They put blinkers on it. Didn't have that originally. It's got the an aftermarket push button. This thing would have been six volts, so it would have been a positive ground to crank it over. There's your kill switch key. Look at these Stuart Warner gauges, Duff. So I thought this was a wood dash, but it's just like, uh, I don't know, what do you call it, wallpaper somebody put on there. Yeah, it's definitely been painted. You could see where there was a oil change decal there, but they didn't do a terrible job. Vacuum wipers up there. So it's got these cool Stuart Warner vintage gauges, but it's got 66 miles on that gauge. Oil pressure, water temp, amps, and fuel. And they actually ran a wire from that fuel tank up there. So props to them on that. I did not get a seat, but they're always shot anyway. So we'll have to find a seat. Oh, make it yourself at home. It looks like they put some new uh, plywood on the floor. It's a Speed Gems adapter, you can tell by the way that it is, because it says Speed Gems across the top. I think that's a 39. Well, I think it's a synchronized transmission, let's hope so. These are aftermarket pedal pads. They're like new, no miles on them, so more on that later. But even the insulation on the firewall is all there. You can see where they trimmed it out for the battery, because the battery should have been below the floorboard, I think. I don't think it should have been in the firewall, but anyway, yeah, I thought this was like a piece of plywood or something, so I'm glad it's not. I'd like to get rid of that, put like a stock banjo steering wheel on it. I don't mind the Stuart Warner gauges. I like the original gauges more on that later, but they painted up these doors all nice. It was a pretty sharp unit. You just uh, hang out in there. I'll give them the tour. The door's got a little crease in the bottom. Where it came ahead and hit the fender, again, happens all the time. A little wrinkle there. Cab corners are amazing on this thing. And usually you can tell if it's been painted by how the jams are done. The inside jams are great. The jams underneath the hood, not terrible for a farmer. Glass is all really good. It's not even like delaminated or anything. No, I mean, slightly. Not much at all. Factory equipped with AC. Another flexi hose up top. It's got these really nice Edelbrock valve covers. Uh, Edelbrock C4B intake. It's got, a, I think that's a Mallory distributor. It's got the Stuart Warner tack controller. I didn't find a tack though. And there's that Mallory Voltmaster Mark II, 12 volt. And then uh, there's our voltage regulator. It's rebuilt, made in USA. And our resistor, there's our 12 volt voltage regulator. It's got like 55 to 57, well, probably like 55 Chevy exhaust manifolds on it so that it'll clear the steering on here. Yeah, like I said, you can see by these brackets, these angle iron flat brackets that this is not the original radiator for it. Oh, there it is. To help Chevrolet rust scale, to help prevent rust scale, use Mopar rust resistor. So it's a uh, Mopar radiator. So Mopar guys, let us know what that is so we can hopefully find a replacement. I'm sure we'll just find an aluminum one for one of these pickups that's set up for a small block. Yeah, 
I'm guessing that intake was brand new. I'm guessing all this stuff was brand new when they put this thing together. Pretty good. Somebody did a little pinstriping down the uh, body line. This fender was, somebody started reworking it and, the, and they did a really nice job. I'm sure it was cracked out right there. Pretty common, but yeah. I would totally run that. This door is good, cab corner is good, running board's got a couple of hooies in it. They did put the correct, I believe, spare tire mount for five on five and a half volt pattern. The wide fives were obviously different. But yeah, the inside of this thing is way gooder than I expected. Austin, Texas. Hello? You wanna reach me about my car insurance? No, you hang up. Yeah, you hang up. Top of the cab's pretty good. A couple of hooies there that we could probably tap out from the inside if we were super concerned about it. But we're not, are we, Duff? Let's look at all the other stuff we got. This thing, it just gets better. Probably the nicest grill that I've ever had for one of these. I always thought they were the same. Talked to the Mopar Madman and he says, nah, they're different. The 39s come together here where the 38s have the uh, little bit of a gap there. And then 38's got that V8 emblem up there. And you can see it's kind of tweaked in a little bit there. There's a little hooey down in the chin. I mean, it ain't amazing, but usually they're just wallered out like nobody's business right there from cranking it by hand, which sounds absolutely miserable. Came with a spare pair of front fenders. We don't need those, but there was two lots. And so there was the lot with the pickup and there was this box of parts in the pickup. And I think there was maybe the hood was in the back of the pickup. But anyway, this other lot had all the rear fenders, two sets of rear fenders, had the grill, had the tow board, and the hood sides. So you pretty much had to buy both lots, otherwise you were gonna be missing a grill and the hood sides, and they were the right grill and hood sides. They were black for this pickup. So yeah, I had to pay an astronomical amount for uh, that lot, but like I said, this pickup was pretty worthless without it. But also in that lot was a, an okay wall hanger, uh, another 38 grill. Do a little straightening on it, it would probably be usable on a pickup like this. I'm guessing these are the stock 59 manifolds. It's got the generator mount up here. Spare starter, we can always use those. It's got the uh, external engagement fork solenoid thinger. Another tow board. And what else was in there? I think I said that hood, can't remember if it was on a pallet, I think it was in the back of the pickup. But I guess that hood latch, this big, amazing Art Deco thing here is different between 38 and 39. The 38's got the sexier one too, I think. There's the hood sides. Uh, Cal Custom air cleaner. You can tell because it says Cal Custom on there somewhere. That was just laying on the engine. But hood sides are really nice. There's the tow board really nice. The transmission pan was also on a pallet. Pretty good shape. They did a little torch in there for some clearance of some sort. Like I said, I picked that up out of the scrap pile, a little ball bearing scooter. That'll be a cool wall hanger. And we got some gaskets. This was a TRW50021 oil pump and I was looking at the destructions for it. And it says, some four quart pans may have to be pounded out or even a hole cut and a larger piece welded in in order to give proper clearance to the pump. So, Printed in USA. So maybe, that's why they modified the oil pan. Maybe, just maybe. There was this uh, three-speed floor shifter, so maybe they had that on a GM. Three-speed, we'll throw that in the pile. I think this is the fuel line, uh, some throttle linkage, the hood prop rods or radiator prop rods. I'm guessing this is the original Delco distributor. They have it gutted, so maybe they were using that to uh, prime the engine, but look at this, thermostat housing. And then you're like, oh, what's this? Sure enough, same bolt pattern. So I'm guessing they were using this for their uh, top radiator hose at one point. There's the stock brake and clutch pedal pads. Here's what they must have had for a block off play on the fuel pump at one time, just some homemade piece. Here's the headlight insert. So I guess they did not have a uh, halogen style in there. There's the fuel filler neck. Not sure what these guys are. Comment down below if you know. But clearly, the red paint, they were for this pickup. A couple of floats. And here's the gauges. Look at how nice they are. And they didn't even cut that line. They even left the uh, speedometer cable as well. 
55,927 miles on Victor. Is that what we're calling this thing? I don't know. Here's the glove box. Yeah. A lot of good pieces. Pretty much everything we need. Like I said, there's uh, three fenders and a couple of trinkets. Still in the Suburban. I think I found a headlight in the uh, scrap pile as well. But let's get some oil in this thing. Let's get the valve covers off. Get the distributor out. And get this thing primed up so we're uh, ready to crank her over. Yeah. I think uh, it's going to crank because look at this. Battery cables are both there. And look at all this wiring. It's all different colors. Usually the old farm boys were all red or all black or blue. There is some wire nuts on the inside I noticed, but not too bad. We might actually just drop a standard distributor in it because I don't know how this uh, Mallory box works or if it even will work or what. Let's see if we can get some oil pressure first. So let's pull these valve covers off, see what it looks like inside there, get that distributor out and uh, go from there. Maybe we'll uh, decode this thing, but I'm pretty sure it's a uh, 59 engine like that previous owner told us we shall see oh, you know it's old school it's got all oh, the flat screws and they put the gaskets underneath them i hate flat screws though oh that one came out at least eastwood makes these nut buster screw buster things so i don't know what they are but they are great for uh screws that fight you Come on, work for me now. Wow. Oops. Gave her too much. Son of a biscuit. So I was gonna try to run it left hand. Do you know how much I hate flathead screws? Oh, for cheese and race. What are we gonna do now? That's a new one. Also, these are like my favorite style valve covers. Hope we didn't screw that up. How can something so simple as taking a valve cover off become so complicated? Looks like there should be a law for that. Mortsky's law. No, oh, wait. That's Murphy. He can have it. All right. Just pop right off there. There. Oh, no. Ooh, no. Oh, no! It's so good and so bad all at the same time. These valve covers were clearly never run before. And this is a fresh engine. Look at all this. But there's all this rust in there. Ugh. So terrible. Yeah, somebody put this thing together and never fired it, I think. So then I had a stuck valve because his rocker's loose. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's no push rod. All these push rods are all brand new too. I mean, they got rust on them, but I think all these parts were brand new. I don't even think they were just cleaned up. I think these were all new parts. Wow. It cleaned up pretty good in there, but that's, why is it missing a uh, push rod? Why did somebody tighten it down? There's no way it could have just slid out of there. Interesting. Well, let's get this valve cover bolt out. Screw. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. 
Stay tuned for those decals. Maybe some other merch. What a handy tool tray. Battery box, tool tray, multi-purpose. I wouldn't recommend just grounding the body though. Should probably run a strap to the engine. Yeah, that tool is an absolute lifesaver. Especially when you're working on these early Fords or anything with a ton of Phillips and end or flat screws. At least all the push rods are on this side. I don't know if you knew this, but Japan did a lot of manufacturing for various manufacturers in the 60s and 70s. Edelbrock was one of them. He's even got the red high tack in here yet. Same deal over here. Everything's brand new. Like I said, brand new push rods even and rocker arms. The dipstick isn't even all rusty though. Well, let's uh, spray some lube on these valve springs and push rods. All right, let's see what this distributor looks like inside. I'm guessing brand new. Who do thunk? Oh, it looks like she's made a few rotations. Dual points. Twice the amount of Mortsky flicking. <laughs> All right, let's uh, pull that distributor out of there and see if we can get some oil pressure. Maybe? Is that a terrible idea? I don't know. We're gonna find out. I finally figured out what this thing is. It's that's the coil. If you ever got to replace the wire on it, I don't know what you do, but yeah, what an ugly thing. Maybe they work great. I don't know. If you've ever used a uh, Mark II Mallory Boltmaster, let us know. Part number 28675. 309. Man, we're using some of our ignition wrenches, even the old 11 30 seconds. Because I need two of them. This silly uh, stud wants to spin. There, take that stud. Spinning stud. Well, it's got the clear plastic oil pressure line. I'm sure that's not brittle after 60 years. Oh, this guy just pops right out of there. Or even turns at all. Oh, that's what I hate about these fresh engines. This hurts me more than it hurts you. There we go. Still comes out easier than a 292 or FE Ford. Yeah, look at that. Brand freaking new underneath there. Never been wrong. Get a look, see just how bad it is in this thing. I can definitely see some rust down there. I need your uh, expert opinion. Uh oh. This thing's brand new. Do we dare? Prime it and fire it up, or I blew all kinds of rust out of here. Oh, okay. I mean, not, you know, not like potato chip flakes, but yeah, she's never been fired. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> can you turn it over by hand? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know about by hand, but I, I put a, a, a bar on it. Yeah. Bar. For some reason, it's missing one of these push rods. I don't, oh. I don't know why. <laughs> But I mean, even the push rods all look like they're brand new, and these rockers look yeah. like they're brand new. Somebody spent some bucks when they did it. The distributor was all brand new. Yeah, man. Yeah, but that when you that oil, if you turn it with the oil pump, you're just gonna knock whatever's loose that's running here. You know, it ain't vibrating, and there's no heat going through it or nothing. I think that's a 
I mean, I'd prime it before I'd start it, but taking yeah. up, taking the oil filter off, I don't think that's well, yeah. gonna gain you much. Your bore scope, look down in the cylinders, we get plugs out. Yeah, but all you can really, you can't see much. It's kind of the top of the piston. I think you're only gonna have one, you know, whichever, maybe two that had the intake valves open there. I bet it'd run real good for tank of gas at least, and then I don't know, then it's crapshoot after that. But if you took it all apart, what do you do? Just pressure wash it and wipe it down with oil and put it back together, but all you do, huh? Well, you do, which you can see what, depends how far down you go, just pull the heads off, then you can see, you know, cylinders. Well, there. if I'm gonna pull the heads off, it ain't nothing to pull the engine on and put it on yeah. a stand, then you pull the oil pan off. Yeah. Well, this one, could go right back together. Yeah, I think you just matter of cleaning Clean it, it up. up. You go right back together again. Yeah. Duff has made the executive decision that we're gonna pull this engine out, and we're gonna put it on a engine stand. We're gonna tear this thing all down because it's too good of an engine to just roll the dice. Yeah, we could prime the oil pump in this thing and run it, and it might be good for an oil change, it might be good for a tank of gas, it might be good forever, but we're there's just too much good stuff in this engine to roll the dice. I'm worried about uh, wiping a lobot on this camshaft or a chunk of this rust gets in a bearing and spins a bearing and and then we got scrap and we got a bunch of scrap engines around the yard so we're not going to do that this one and if we do find something we should just be able to clean it up regasket it put it all back together but if we can't if we find something in it that we gotta adjust or fix or buy parts and we'll wait for parts and i got another worn out old used 283 we can drop in here or a 350 and carry on with our lives but i just not feeling it and firing this thing up so we do the right thing we're gonna pull it all apart we gotta find a radiator anyway and get rid of these flexi hoses and find a push rod so let's just pull this thing out put it in a run stand engine stand and uh, do a little further investigation Shoo-hoo boy. I'm glad we uh, tore into this part of it anyway. Look at that flexi hose did. Created a bunch of crystal methamphetamine. Right inside that thermostat housing. Eww, Duff. How fitting, somebody sent us a I'm on meth shirt. And we found a bunch of meth in the old thermostat housing. All right, back to work. Duffers. We got all the stuff done on the top side. No thanks to you. You want to do the stuff on the bottom? I suppose, he says. Or do you just want me to rub your ears? I bet that's what you want. Who's a good pupper, Duffers? Who's a good pupper? You need a haircut for hunting season, even though there's no birds around anymore. All right, let's lift her up.
There you can see speed gems cast on top of that adapter and you can see how they whittled the firewall out a little bit. All right, I think we're ready to pull it out. I'll tell you what, that top starter bolt was a real son of a biscuit. I modified a wrench and I ended up using a chisel and a hammer and tapping, catching on the edges of the uh, nut, spinning it off that way. So we definitely got to address that. Ready to slide her out of there? Ready. Yep, up. Clutch definitely looks used. I don't know what's going on with this uh, pilot bearing, but it doesn't look like it's very happy. You ate the second to last one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're not gonna stick around to see what's behind door number three here? Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, oh shnikes. Holy shnikes. How the heck does that happen? That's fresh, I did that when I was turning it over, I bet. Speaking of being stuck, your, your super glue doesn't hold my... Uh-oh. We're, we're gonna need some new glue. It lasted about a year and a half, though. A year, anyway. So here's what we found. We uh, shelled a push rod. Didn't just bend it. Broke her in three pieces. Nobody forgot it. Mojo thinks the valve must be stuck, and that's why. But yeah, good thing we took her apart. That's a lot of uh, rust and such in there. That's a new one. Huh. Yeah, look at that goop. In the end. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, she would have. Ain't looking very good. No? Oh, that's fine. It'll be fine. Everything is fine. It's freaking everywhere, too. Yeah. Oh, dang it. Why can't we have anything nice? Just once. Well, I guess we'll pull some heads in an oil pan. Just what you wanted to do tomorrow, huh? Mm -hmm. Job security. What do they look like? Are they? Those are hydraulic lifters, ain't they? Looks like it. They look like it, you yeah. know. Yeah, they got snap rings yeah. in them. Snap rings in there. there All right. And you told me to just change the oil filter. You'd be good. <laughs> Glad I didn't listen to you. Yeah. Well, let's rip into this thing. I mean, how much worse can it be? I can't believe it turned over. It's so good. Is what it is. You win some, you lose some. Hopefully we can get some good pieces out of it at least. I mean the rest of the pickup is great. I was just really hoping for a good engine. Not even a fresh engine, just good. This is fresh bad. Alright. We gotta get the manifolds off to put on whatever engine we put in here in the flywheel. Hopefully we can no, we're gonna have to pull the engine out of the stand to get the flywheel off. Alright, let's do this. Before we rip into it, look at that. That intake is a brand new. Oh, on the starter, I saw 10 of 74 stamped on the solenoid, so it's probably in the 70s when they got out of this project. Got into it. Who knows when they quit. Or 
we get too deep in it. Look at all that mouse matter, hay and seeds and whatever in the exhaust parts. And there's some mouse crap in that intake port, water in that intake port, rust in that one, some dead uh, flies in that one. This is the one that was broke off. Look at all those, I don't know if it's poop or flies or dead animals or what. Rust in that one, rust in that one. And then these are coolant passages completely plugged. This one, not quite, but yeah, bad things happen when you uh, store stuff improperly. I don't think it would have mattered if this engine was new or not. This thing would probably have been shot with all the stuff that got in it, unfortunately. Let's pull some heads off. Well, I'm pretty sure we got some water in that cylinder. Good stuff. I don't see any cracks in the block, at least. But that cylinder's definitely full of water. Maybe not. How the heck was it turning over? Come on, disappointment. Oh. God dang it. It's coolant. So, at least it had that in it. This freaking thing. Standard pistons. And I think they're high compression or I don't know a ton about engines. But anyway, that means standard bore. And they got this, uh, I don't know, pop up piston thing in there. I don't know, they all look okay ish so far on this side. And this was the side that had the stuck valve. We might get lucky, but here's your tech tip. There's a uh, pipe plug right there. You can drain the coolant out of the block by that. Sometimes you gotta take it out and you gotta prod around in there and knock the rust loose so that it comes out of there. But that's the only way to properly drain a block or to get everything out. Otherwise, it, you know, if you, even if you pull the radiator hose, it's only gonna come down to there. But yeah, this was a, a pretty freaking hot engine. It does look like it was fired and maybe run for a very, very, very short time because there's a little soot on those. But there's like zero ring ridge. But there's definitely mouse poops. It's a mouse block. You got to laugh about stuff like this because otherwise you just hate your life. Well, we're at it. Let's look at the bottom of the head here. I mean, look at that freaking gasket. That is a fresh gasket. <coughs> Well, let's see how the valves look once we get them out of there. Nothing super concerning. That valve is stuck open, you know, and that one was closed because nothing got into that cylinder. You can see the ones that got a bunch of humidity either through the intake or the exhaust. So yeah, we might be all right. What do you think, Duff? We've been driving the snot out of the old Bluezer. That thing is so good, even with like only a windshield and one piece of side glass in it, isn't it? Yeah. Did you find more poop to roll in? Definitely. That is not a natural body color or odor of yours, you stinky dog. It's been a pretty good summer for poop because uh, all the snow last winter killed off all the animals around here, except for you, Duff. You survived laying on the couch in the heated shop. All right, let's drain a block. Sometimes these things are not very cooperative in coming out. Usually they're a uh, 9 16 hex, which is a lot easier to deal with than the stupid square. See, nothing came out. But you know what works great in this application? You're uh, screwed by Mortsky Repair Magnetic Screwdriver, available at Mortsky.com. When I tell you, 60% of the time it works. Every time. 60% of the time it works every time. That doesn't make sense. There's a little bit of a green hue to that stuff. There's a lot more coolant in a block than you would think. And uh, those of you that have pulled an engine and rolled it around in your shop floor, 
No, because it seems like it drains forever and makes a real mess of your shop. I like this. Definitely want to tighten that back up because if that rattled loose on you, uh, that's going to be a bad day. Bad day going on the road losing all your coolant. You know, why not drop that in the bucket of coolant? All right, let's pull another head off. Remember I talked about how those plugs are a real pain in the behind? Yeah, this side still is, because we didn't get it out of there, but we brought it off real good with the locking players. Ah, we'll probably just have to weld a nut on it or something. You know, we'll have to see, but look at the vacuum out. This thing might, she might clean up. Like I said, it turned over real good. That cylinder's a little pitted up. We might have to dingle ball it a bit. We'll see. We'll see. But it's a lot better than I thought. And then I think we're going to have to do a... A Velva jobby. We'll see. Just keep taking her apart. One step at a time. Is that what Johnny Cash said? No. One piece at a time. Come on. Go in the bucket. There you go. You know you want to. Another way to drain your block, just tip it on its side. Or upside down. That works too, I bet. in the oil pan it does look like they dropped the sump down instead of uh, shortening it they extended it hmm interesting all right well two bolt main all 283s are two bolt main mojo says if there's grinding down here that means it's been balanced that's where they would take weight off I don't know if these look like they've been balanced or not. That definitely looks like a new rod. Somebody uh, replaced one of them. And then the uh, crankshaft has been drilled there and it looks like it's been welded up there. So maybe she's a balanced bottom end, but I'm guessing this is that high volume oil pump and that's why they had to uh, extend the oil pan. I am not an engine guru by any means. I think we can maybe suck a little rust out of there. This looks really good down here. I am excited about that. Clean up that oil pan, put a new gasket. Clean up that a bit. Yeah. Let's pull a harmonic balancer and pull that front timing cover off and see what it's got for a cam in it. See if we can get a identification out of it. Double roller, freaking heavy. Oh yeah, big dog. No surprises in there. That's good. USA, so it's a good one. Where's our timing works? We should line up. 
before we take it all apart. Right there. So you would think it would turn pretty easy. Pretty easy, I say. There we go. Alright, it's Mark 78. What the heck does that mean? Does that mean it's a big dog or what? All right, I think that's where we're gonna wrap her up tonight. Go have a celebratory sandwich. I don't know what we're celebrating. That we got it all apart. I was a little disappointed earlier, but I think there's some hope left for this thing. There's always hope. All right, can't win them all. Probably see you tomorrow. Or if I get a couple sandwiches in me and decide to start filming again. Maybe we'll see you in a little bit. The inebriated Mordski. Nah. Maybe Duff and I are going to go for a cruise in the blues here. It's getting kind of dark. We'll see. It does have lights. They all work. You would never believe it, but they do. All right, just jumped on my phone. Just kidding. I'm still here. Uh, they made an L78, which is a big block. 396. So I, I doubt they put a 396 camshaft in this thing so we're gonna have to keep looking we should say like Duntov or something on it you know or crane or crower I don't know I don't know what to say all right I think we determined we're gonna take this thing apart we're gonna clean up the rings the bottom end looks great the big thing we're gonna have to figure out is the lifters because they're just I think there's three or four of them that are not so hot. We might try running them through the ultrasonic cleaner. But yeah, these two here are uh, pretty chewy in there. The rest will probably clean up. Mojo's over here ripping into the heads. He says they look good. Good enough for the girls we go with, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah we should be able to hopefully just clean them up and run them. Maybe touch up the valves. That one is stuck. Pretty good. I, I think that was, the, yeah, that was the one that snapped that bush rod. You want to hook up a chain for me? Yeah, I could do that. You're capable. So I had a 65 283 lane in storage. So I think we're going to stick that in it. Here it is out of a two door hardtop Impala in all its greasy gloriness. We should probably pressure wash it. So this one run good 14 years ago when I pulled her out and I fogged her down. So hopefully it's still good. It's been under a roof. It's had an air cleaner on it. Just needs a little TLC. I think the mouse poop was on it when I pulled it out. Two barrel, I'm sure it's a whopping 170 horsepower, but we gotta swap manifolds. Uh, it should have the short pulleys on it. Ooh, this one had power steering. It's got the uh, accessory pulley. And then we'll have to put a flywheel on the back because this thing had a power slide behind it. Yeah, all the good stuff. Ooh, this one didn't have the 59 had a road draft tube that was hideous and hard to route over there. This guy's just got the breather going into the uh, carburetor, you know, PCV. We're burning all that uh, blow by instead. All right, we got this hot little 283 all torn down, and let's take a look at it. The pistons, this one has uh, done a little kissy kissy, smoochy smoochy, eh, duffers? But all the rest look good. They have been run, but pretty low hours. This cylinder, it's got a little bit of rust up there. It's in the very top, mostly. We'll run the old dingle ball through it and see how we can clean her up. This one looks rusty, but it's really just kind of dirty but these two look freaking amazing and these ones are all really good as well that one's maybe got i mean it's just kind of dirty i think it'll clean up we'll probably take and pressure wash it and run a wire wheel and 
try to clean that stuff, that scale up. Because you don't want that scale floating around in there and getting knocked loose later on because then it'll end up in your bearings and bad things happen. Clean engine's a happy engine. There's only one of these pistons that had a stuck top ring in it. So this is what rings should be loose, moving around, doing ring things. You don't want any of the gaps lined up. There's your gap. This one's, uh, she's a little sticky. So we gotta clean that set of rings up, free them up. You know, you can see that one's kind of halfway stuck, but this top one's completely stuck. But other than that, it should be good to go. It had one brand new rod in it. I can't remember if I pointed that out. Where's that at? I can't really tell from this angle, but this one's a lot lighter colored than the other one, so they must put one new rod in it. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. The biggest thing is what we're gonna do with them push, we're, uh, push, 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 lifters. Got these over here. You can see these three are pretty chewy. The rest should clean up just fine. So maybe we'll take them apart. We're not really out anything. And I, yeah, we'll see. Well, yeah, maybe four of them. These two especially. But there's a little snap ring in there. Let's find a clean one. You can see that little snap ring in there. If we take that snap ring apart, maybe we can blast these things apart and clean them up. If not, we can look at them and see what they look like inside. Worst case scenario, we've got to buy some new lifters. Not the end of the world. All right, we got this 1965 Impala 283 all cleaned up. We're going to take the carburetor off, and we're going to put the adapter lift plate on there. We're going to get this thing lifted up. And I'll give you a quick walk around of it. And then we're just going to slam it home and there's going to be no issues. And everything's going to go great. Because optimism. Here we go. <laughs> well, that's not off to a good start. There's one of the carb mounting studs. Pretty common, unfortunately. They get all rusty in there and snap off. So we're gonna have to fix that probably. Great, grand, wonderful. Just what I wanna do is fix a stud on a silly old two bolt carburetor intake. Dang it. Good, great, grand, wonderful. So here's why we're having to fix that is there's a heat passage right here. I think that's what it is. But anyway, it's, uh, you can see how that mounting bolt it's enclosed and this one's got this big opening here. They rot out on these two very, very often. And uh, a lot of these two bolt carburetors, especially in the later era, they only had two bolts mounting it. So we'd probably be all right. But let's uh, take a crack at fixing it. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time, but we're gonna do it anyway. Obviously we're gonna need a new gasket now. And this carburetor probably could use a rebuild, but we'll see. Cross that path when we get there. This one ain't looking much better, but I might regret this decision. I definitely don't want to use my lifting plate and have only these two holding it. That might not be bueno. Oh, we can plug the power brake vacuum port because we're not going to need that. All right, let's try welding a nut onto this and see how that goes. It'll go just fine. I love when people put stuff back not working. Like, is this thing out of wire? Like, you know, heaven forbid you say, hey, Marsky, your uh, welder's out of wire. I mean, it, it could, oh, oh, the side lid's even partially open. Oh, yeah. I love Mojo to death, but he is afraid to tell me when something is needs replacing or needs fixed, like just you're like, hey, uh, your welder's out of wire, the 110 welder. It's 23 wire. Maybe you want to order some, or better yet, just refill it with the new roll of wire that's sitting right there, huh, Doc? Oh, look, hey, a fresh roll of oh, that's 30. Either way, there's a roll of 30 that's not fresh. Keep your roll of wire in a plastic bag so that the moisture doesn't get to it. Oh, people, like, you use the last of the paper towels. Put a new roll on. If there's no new roll, say, hey, 
We need a new roll of paper towels. I guess if that's the worst thing that happens this week around here, we'll be just fine. Stuff like that. Cripes. Car's out of gas, put gas in it. Or say, hey, before you use the car, it needs gas. So I guess we will be converting the Miller 140 from uh, 023 wire to 030, which is fine. I actually prefer 030, but 23 works good for sheet metal and exhaust. Now look, we just go on Amazonia and punch in 10 pounds of 0.023 inch welding wire. And then in a few days we'll have it here and everybody carries on with their lives. So many options, 35 bucks a roll, that seems pretty reasonable. Or we get two rolls for 57. Well, you know what we're gonna do. I always like having extra on hand. Really, it's welding wire. I mean, can you get bad welding wire? If you could, it would be me. ER70 Esh 6. Add to cart. $57.95 for two rolls. So what's that? 20. Carry the nine. Six and a quarter plus potato. 29 bucks a roll? Not bad. Not bad at all, though. Well, that went so dang well, let's try the other one. And immediately regret. Optimism! At no extra charge. Maybe we should do a short video, or a second channel video, get back into that, um, this whole process. Comment below if you want to see how we extract snapped off hardware using a welder, in a nut, in a washer, and earbuds, because I'm listening to music, because my welds are so terrible that if you can't hear the welds, they're not bad welds. I swear that last nut was made out of like aluminum or something. That's why we had to use the locking pliers on it because it was not happy. It wouldn't accept the weld, so it was probably an aluminum nut. How that got in there, I don't know. Okay, less talking, more welding. Ooh, that sounds way better. I really like this Miller 140 because it's got the auto set option. So you basically turn it to whatever wire you got, 23 or 30. And then you just set it to your metal thickness. Well, that generally works if you got nice clean metal, but with this rusty stuff like this, it's not working. So we manually set it, which is what I'm used to. Well, just snap off for, for cheese and rice. That's what you want to do anyways. So just do it. Sometimes if you tap it down, because when they tighten it up on the carburetor, it's pulling the threads up. So if you tap it down, it's not fighting the threads. I don't know. That's what somebody told me once. And it just feels good to hit things. And the weld's broke. I can fix that. Definitely gonna snap. Yep. Ah yes, great success. A great success. Ooh, don't drop that down the intake. Even save the washer. What a deal. One, two, three. Only three nuts? Not bad. That's like a new world record for me. That's only one and a half nuts per, okay, maybe it was four, whatever. Two nuts a piece, not bad. Now we either gotta find some bolts or the right studs. 
That's hot. That might be hot too. All right, while we let that cool off, let's pull this power brake booster fitting T elbow thing out of the intake and put a plug in. We could do a short on um, welders and why I have blue ones versus red or pink or purple, whatever color welders are out there. We may as well give her a quick hit with the old SS1 super scraper. Oh, we got her handy, convenient. Get yours at morski.com. I don't think we have any of the SS ones right now, but we got them on order. Go check it out, morski.com. I think we got some SS5s. The 5S's and the SS1's are on order though. They're such a good product, they fly right off the shelves. Alright, we got a couple things I want to wrap up on this 283 before we slide it in, but before we slide it in, we got to put the clutch on it, and uh, I just want to talk about why I didn't clean it up, why I'm running the two barrel, why I didn't put the fancy valve covers, the ignition, and yada yada. So a couple things. I just want to get this thing running and on the road. So time. If I had cleaned this thing up, it's going to take a whole bunch of time to, you know, clean up the valve covers, and then you're like, what about leaks? So you, Pull the oil pan, reseal it, put a timing chain in it, swap the intake out, rebuild the carburetor, put valve cover gasket, put the different valve covers, check the timing, prime the oil pump. It's like that's all takes a bunch of time, and I don't have a ton of time, and I get burned out. That's what happens. So like I'd blow this engine all apart, and then I'd be like, oh man, you really should put new water pump on it. So then it's like, oh, we're waiting for a water pump, stuff like that. Let's just slam it together. If the water pump leaks, we'll slide a water pump on it later. So time. And then painting these things, I hate when guys do a half A job of painting an engine. It's like, just leave it the way it is. It looks fine. I like it like this better than I like a fresh engine that just looks like absolute dog garbage. Quote unquote, DD speed shop style. Sorry, Dan. You're a hack. So anyway, we're just gonna slide it in the way it was, and this is probably what these guys did back in the day. You know, you just grab whatever you had in the junkyard, throw her in there. The two barrel, it worked. I got two barrel stuff laying around. Again, you pull the intake off, you swap intakes, you clean up the intake, then I gotta find a four barrel carb that works. Then you're pulling the distributor, out. well then I should change the distributor. Oh man, it just snowballs. And then you're looking for valve cover gaskets. You're looking for intake gaskets. Well, you know, you do the timing chain. Should we put a new water pump on it? Blah, 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 blah. Let's just huck it in there and get the dang thing going. So as you can see, we already swapped the flywheel on there. This thing had a flex plate. We had a damn it machine this uh, cute little adapter. Turns out you gotta have this adapter in the crankshaft to go to the Ford pilot bushing well it's not even the ford one it's the ford diameter so anyway he made us a pilot bushing made us this adapter the other engine had one in the crankshaft we kind of tapped on it a little bit to see if it would come out of there and it would not come out of there so we're just going to leave that in that other crankshaft so if you're ever putting a early ford transmission behind a small black chevy be aware that you need to adapt it to a different diameter and you need to push it out because the ford uh, input shaft does not stick out far enough so Something that I was not aware of that I just found out. Engine mounts, we don't need engine mounts because we got that Hurst engine mount which we got to put on here. And while we put that on here, we're gonna have to get rid of our fuel pump because that mount gets in the way, which is fine because I'm sure this fuel pump is dried up and crappy and no bueno. Uh, like I said, water pump's probably shot too, but uh, that's easy four bolt swap later. We're gonna have to plug some holes for our heater hoses there's one there and there's one there so we can either do that now or later we still need to do that one in the intake yeah we could probably put valve cover gaskets on it but that's easy enough to do later rear main seal is going to leak because that's just what they do hopefully this canister style oil filter doesn't get in the way i'm fine with those things they're kind of big and ugly and bulky and a pain to change but or uh change the oil they're not too hard to change over but it's going to be fine for what we do this is a temporary engine swap there's nothing more permanent than a temporary engine swap. So that being said, I'm gonna address a couple of those things. We're gonna put the, the clutch, pressure plate, 
all that good stuff on here. And we're gonna get the engine mount swapped on. We're gonna plug a couple of them holes with some pipe plugs. We should be uh, ready to swap this thing in there. Hopefully, maybe, we'll see. We gotta put the exhaust manifolds on there too. I think that's about it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Did we take the gas pedal out? I don't think so. So we're gonna have to figure out gas pedal and throttle linkage. I was just thinking we're gonna have different throttle linkage between a two barrel and a four barrel. So yeah, we'll have to address that. All right. Let's do this. Oh, this was set up for power steering, so we can take that pulley off because we don't need the long pulley. Good call, Duff. Good call. You're a lot of help. I know you don't say much, but when you do, it's meaningful. So I was always told you couldn't run a mechanical pump. It looks like it clears the Hurst engine mount, but I suppose it's gonna get away of uh, our engine mounts on the frame rail. Let's keep an eye on that, because I really would like to avoid running a clickety-clack. Because I love the electric fans and fuel pumps. Most annoying sound in the world. Hey, wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? So here's our clutch alignment tool. There's these different bushings that go on the end or adapters, whatever. You pick the one that's the same size. I'm trying to teach the people something here, Duff. You give them the same, you get one that's the same size as what your uh, input shaft is. And then this thing's just got a taper and you just use that taper to center up the pressure plate. You're good to go. Usually I like to resurface these, but this one's in pretty good shape. And there again, that takes time if I run this in to the uh, machine shop and have them resurface it. A, it cost me 60 bucks, and B, this is temporary. And uh, C, it takes time to go do that. They don't, I don't know, usually they have a pretty quick turnaround, but it's uh, Saturday right now and they're not gonna do it on a Saturday, I can tell you that. So then that's uh, three more days so we're not getting it done. And that's what we're all about, is getting it done. Make sure you're using the right bolts. These are a 3 8 bolt, a little short guy, and then they got that shoulder on there. Pressure plate bolts. Use the right stuff. And that little bit of a shoulder is so you get some bolt stretch in there. I'm not gonna explain bolt stretch. We're gonna leave that up to uh, Old West. That's more his alley, stuff like that. You know, education and all. Clamp load grades of bolts. I just know to use the right hardware. I don't know why it's the right hardware, but it's the right hardware. You're probably supposed to torque it to something too. Again, check with Wes or your manual. We just go with bug and duggas around here. So get that lined up with our pilot bearing. Push that taper in there so she's centered. You're good to go. Some of those kits, when you buy a clutch kit, will have a tool for it. They're plastic, they're cheesy, but they work. Or if you're real crazy, you take the input shaft out of your transmission or have a spare one laying around and then you got something real nice. Tell you what, I might actually look up the torque on those and torque them down, because you don't want these coming loose, because then you gotta pull it all back apart again. Plus you gotta fix what broke. And you don't want broken stuff with your clutch, because then you're probably walking them. And that's no bueno either. I don't know why this happened. I thought I kind of didn't just crank one bolt down with that manifold split right there. And of course this is the special manifold. It's a, I think it's a 55 manifold because you can't run a center dump because that steering box is there. So that's going to be an exhaust leak. 
I might have one laying around, but I doubt it. Easy enough to replace later. We're not going to stop. But that is frustrating, and you probably could, I suppose, V that out and weld it up. Luckily, it cleared the dipstick. I was worried about that, Jimmy. But anywho, stuff like that. That's what gets you every time. Dang it. Yeah, the other thing, so this is a 65 engine, so it's got this, instead of the road draft tube, just dumping into the atmosphere. This has kind of got a early PCV that dumps into the uh, carburetor and burns those gases from the crankcase as opposed to just dumping them onto the road. We could probably get rid of that oil pressure sensor because we don't have that. We got a mechanical gauge and our coil is mounted on the firewall, but I think we're just going to run a standard coil, so we'll probably leave that one. Oh, it's box elder bug season. Well, hey, little buddy. You know, we should probably see if this thing turns over before we get too crazy. Good to go. That's why you lube them down, fog them down before you put them away, and then store them properly. And also, don't pressure wash them until you're ready to use them because that water gets in there one way or another. And you don't want water sitting in your cylinders because then when you go to use it, you'll have a nice clean engine that's stuck and it's probably scrap iron. Since this thing had one of them crappy plastic oil lines on it that I also despise along with Kregers and flexi hoses and side pipes and white letters, we're gonna put a good copper oil line on it. This is a kit by Equius, it's part number 9901. There's six feet of tubing, so you should be able to use this on multiple applications. Who am I kidding? It probably takes more than three feet, but anyway, we're gonna use this guy. Or gal, I didn't ask it how it identifies, but. Ooh, it even comes with a cute little grommet to go through the firewall. Look yeah, that cute little guy. And while I'm unpackaging this, I'll tell you why I don't like the clear plastic lines. Actually, drag tracks, or uh, yeah, whatever. Race tracks won't let you run them because that's how crappy and prone they are to failing. I know several people who had them fail and get a leg full of hot oil when they're driving their car. Um, it's plastic, so it's brittle, and then heat cycles, and then heaven forbid if it's ever seen sunlight, it's gonna get brittle even quicker and fail on you. And uh, when that thing fails, if you don't catch it in time, you're gonna run out of oil and uh, ruin your engine. So spend a few more bucks and get the copper kit. I don't know how much this one was, but you can definitely buy a lot of these kits for what it costs to replace one small block Chevrolet engine, even if it's the uh, $50 1965 junkyard variety. Also, use this, was it Blue Monster? Puddin loves this stuff. I don't know if it's that great, but he swears it is. And then wrap it the right way. There is a right way to wrap around a pipe thread, but you all knew that. Okay, rant over on plastic oil lines. I'm gonna thread this guy in there, and we're gonna tighten up all these other, swap out all these other plugs, not tighten them up. We're gonna swap them out and then tighten them up. You can use a whole lot of that blue monster. I prefer pipe dope tape over the liquid dope stuff because it just gets everywhere. It's so, it's so much cleaner when you do it this way. Staring at my butt's hole the entire time. I'm the movie, guys. Oh, everybody, look at my fancy butthole. Well, let's take the hardware off of the engine mount bolts. That would have been wise. <laughs>
You know what, since I'm quite confident that this little 283 is gonna breathe fire again, I am gonna go ahead and change the oil on it. I got some cartridge style filters on hand because I got a bunch of hot garbage like this around and we'll put some fresh 530 or 1030 or 1540, or whatever we can find on the shelf in there and really treat this thing right, you know? Real nice. Really nice. But yeah, uh, ignition's all hooked up, carburetor's in place, vacuum lines are hooked up and plugged and whatever. So really, all we gotta do is throw a battery in this thing and hook up a fuel tank like we do on every other freaking will it run in the world. And hopefully this thing lights right off. It's probably not gonna run amazing. Cleaned up the old RJ12YC plugs, took the used plug wires off of the 283 that was in this thing, and flicked the points a couple times. I didn't put a cap, rotor, points. I found a coil because I'm guessing I had to steal this coil to put on something else because I get stuff that's missing coils all the time. So got that on there. Yeah, should be uh, ready to fire. Just need a battery and uh, some fuel. I don't know why it wouldn't just light right up, you know? Properly stored. What do you suppose this stuff's gonna look like? Hopefully if there's any water, or humidity or whatever they got in there. It should be at the bottom since we didn't turn it over or fire it. And you, can, you can't see the pan, but I'll miss it guaranteed. Well, glad we checked that. I'm gonna go ahead and find a new gasket for our drain plug because this one's a little chewy. And uh, we'll get a oil filter here. Conveniently, both use the same size three quarter inch wrench. I knew there had to be oil in here somewhere because this thing's been dripping on the floor. Ooh, that oil actually looks really good. Probably could have ran it. Oh, she's a Fram GH 200 PL. Get a new washer. Hopefully that seals that up because I hate leaks. Even though I know the rear main, probably the front main, valve cover, all that's going to leak anyway, but this one's easy enough to address. All right, these new canister style filters come with this, I don't know if you want to call it an O-ring, gasket, whatever. And that's what seals the canister to the filter housing. You got to get the old ones out of there. I say ones because usually it's plural and nobody ever does it. There should only be one up there. If you get more than that, they leak. We don't like leaks. Hey, look at that. Only one up there, perfect. Man, I forgot to put the seal up there. That would have not been good. Idiot. Idiot. We gotta hook the oil pressure gauge up so we can tell if we got oil pressure and we don't get a giant mess in the cab. Don't forget that. We're gonna treat this old 283 right with the old Quaker State 5W30 Advanced Durability. Look at that, it's got Dale Earnhardt Jr. on it. This is some vintage stuff. The nice little neighbor lady in town gave us this. So shout out to Elaine for uh, sponsoring this oil change. Yo, Earnhardt Jr., I ain't much on the old NASCAR. But I think it's been a few years since he's been off the circuit. He hung her up early. I don't even know, is NASCAR going on right now? Or is it just 
the American football. I think baseball's in the playoff season. I know nothing about basketball. All righty. I'm gonna go wash up my hands because they're all oily from that oil filter. I can see why they went away from the canister style because they're just messy. They're high maintenance. There's a lot of leak points. Nice part about it is you can look at the filter when you change the oil and see just how dirty it is in the canister and inside the filters. There's that advantage, but it's a mess. All right, I'm gonna go get cleaned up. Uh, I do my best work on my back in the dark. I don't know what that even means, but I've heard a lot of people say it. All right. Goodbye, clear plastic line. Good riddance. I say good riddance. I, I say good day. <laughs> I say good day. All right. So, we got plenty of copper line up here. So now, do we do the right thing and cut it off or just leave a bunch under the dash? I think we'll cut it off. What's the best way to cut this stuff? Because you don't want to pinch it. I guess we'll get a tubing cutter, hopefully that works. Tubing cutter, don't use a side cutter. It'll squish it flat and then it'll leak and not work. Don't forget to put your ferrule on. Not your wheel ferrule. Yeah, of course, drop that underneath the car. Gosh dang it. Crazy subverted. Thought it would go somewhere we couldn't reach it because it's not magnetic, you know, because that's how my life goes. All right. Snug her up and we should have a working oil gauge. There is a wire nut down here. I'm not a fan of that. Especially that black wire that who knows what that goes to. So the yellow goes to our starter, green goes to our starter wire. This green wire got real hot. What's that hooked up to? Oh, an amp gauge. Yeah, we should just get rid of that. No boy, no. Running off that switch. Yeah. I don't like that. We're going to have to do some wiring. We'll get it running with a loser switch for now. Lucky us. Somebody's coming to get that 51 Ford F4 finally. Giving the thing away, basically. And I thought sure shooting when I was laying underneath that dash hanging upside down that they would show up, but sometimes you get lucky. All right. Oil's in it. I think we're throw a battery and get some fuel. What else did we forget, Duff? He just wants to go for an RIDE. We got to get a seat and a radiator before we can get too crazy. Maybe some brakes. Here they are, driving their big red Ford. Blue platers. <laughs> Triple axle trailer. Dang. Yeah, blue platers are scary, ain't they, Duff? What are you doing over here? Checking armature. Checking an armature with a growler. And not the kind of growler you get beer in. How do you check it? Well, you got one of these machines. You got a growling machine. Yeah. And that you take a razor. Saw blade? Axe saw blade. And if this blade jumps and it holds it down on here, this is short. But you see it is not doing that, that means it's good. Then you can also... Is that why they call it a growler? Because yeah. of the noise it makes? Yeah. And then you can also test it this fashion, you know, and then like this, and then like To make sure it ain't shorted out? Oh, there are the lights lighting up. Yeah. But now see you got... That's where you want it to have continuity. Where you want it to light up all the way around there. Okay. 
But you don't want it to light up this way. Always you got to short in it. Man, those things got wood handle. They're they're almost as old as you. It is. But don't touch those two. You get a jolt. Oh, you done that before? Well, you're gonna live to tell about. It. What is this thing called? The something electrical works, Rock Island. The pick pick pickron lickron. That thing's. Can I touch it? Sure. She's warm. Yeah. So that's how a growler works. <coughs> and you can test alternators or starters and generators. Yep. The more you know. We need some brushes. Yeah. Check this out. Procedure? You're going to use the old Edison bulb again, huh? You don't want continuity there, or do you want continuity? No, you don't want you don't want nothing here, because that's your that's your power side. Okay. Okay, you don't want no short there. Okay. Okay, now this is your ground side. See. And then here's your ground side. Okay. So this is checking out good. Well, that's why you get a jolt because it's 110 volt. You bet. That, that stuff don't mess around. Yeah. The more you know. So basically, that's just an just a fancy, well, not even a fancy, just a budget ohm meter. Instead of instead of looking at a meter, you just a light bulb flashes in your face. Continuity. Yeah. Continuity. Continuity. Continuity, Duff. You get all that? All right. We're gonna be back in action in no time with our Mojo overhaul generator. Okay. And then also starter. If we get brushes. We, we need some brushes. We'll go dig through the stash, see if we can find some brushes. Okay. And then we'll clean her up and put her back together. Here, this is working off of the end. Ooh, boy. We might have to look for one of them. They should be round, shouldn't they? Or they got a yeah. flat side to them? Yeah, they should be round. Yeah. Well, we might have to see what we can dig up in our stash. I don't think I got one of them that's new. But I might have some brushes in my stash. Okay. Well, look at what I dug up in my stash. Some new old stock D757s. Here's our old one. And there's a new one. It yeah. got a little bit more life left in it. Just one screw and you swap them out, huh? Yep. Heck of a deal. It's so easy a caveman could do it, right? Right. It's so easy, a caveman could do it. <laughs> what? Oh, no, I... Not cool. I did Even I could do it. <laughs> All right, I've been plugging away at this thing a little bit behind the scenes because it's boring stuff that you didn't want to see me actually do, but I'll show you the aftermath. So, we got our boat tank, or our auxiliary tank, whatever you call it, in the bed, because the OG to this project, Minneapolis Moline tank was super crusty and nasty inside, plus it takes up bed space. So, long term, we'll get a factory style 38 Ford pickup fuel tank and we'll put it in the frame rails back at the back of the bed and then it'll fill through the fender and everything will be great. But until then, I'll show you what we did. So like I said, we got a boat tank up there. I drilled a hole through the floor for the fuel line because the original way they had it set up, it came from that side, but then it had to cross all the way over here to the fuel pump. And then they had it routed over to that side and up the engine. Well, this is the side that the carburetor has the inlet and that's the side that a mechanical fuel pump would be. So I just went up this side and they had rubber going the entire way. We utilized one of our standard hepatitis 02A fuel clickety clack pumper ooskies from the old Amazonia and then I got rubber fuel line. I don't like using rubber fuel line, but like I said, this is temporary until it's permanent. Uh, and then we got hard steel line from here ahead, a little chunk of rubber in there. And they got a little chunk of rubber up here going between the stock 2G fuel line where it would hook into the mechanical fuel pump. Just a little chunk of rubber there. So you don't want a whole bunch of rubber. Rubbers are bad. But anyway, like I said, this part is just temporary. Hopefully we can get a mechanical pump because I really hate clickety clacks, but that, is what we got going on here. But also, look at how much room we got between the oil pan and this drag link. So hopefully we can just find a standard drag link or a, at least a new tie rod end in a uh, 
coupler here and get rid of that death wish right there. And when we put a different engine back in it, we'll put a stock oil pan and oil pump. I don't know why they thought they needed that high volume oil pump. And I had to modify all this steering. We don't need that. So let's get her on the ground and uh, see if we can get this thing to breathe fire. We may or may not have spilled a lot of gas on yesterday, Duff. Yeah, look away. Oh, like it was my fault. Anyway, we took care of it in a proper manner. No need to worry, Greta. How dare you? So like I said, utilize the stock fuel line so it looks stock up here even though it's not hooked to a mechanical fuel pump we still got to hook up our temp sending unit we got to run a, our uh, ignition wires underneath the manifolds and down underneath but these things are in pretty tough shape so i think we'll get some new ones when we get to that point we got a ground hooked up to the body we put a new ground on the battery hooked it to the intake uh, we got a ground down here going to the frame so we got all kinds of grounds taking place we got the old trent footnum box here Hooked up to the uh, clickety-clack, no. We're just hooked up to the coil, and that back feeds the ignition switch, and so that, that will run the uh, clickety-clack. So, we just got a coil hooked up, and our starter. Should we put a little gas in this thing, Duff? Oh, he, he took off. He wasn't interested in that Dana 44 limited slip. So, let's test her out, see if she works. Starter? <laughs> Cranking over, I wonder if we got any spark. Fuel pump's running, so that means we should have power going to the coil. Let's check for spark. Did we give it the Morsky flick when we had it apart? I can't remember. Why is there spark coming out of the coil? Oh, it's because I unhooked the wrong end. Duh. So I think we got spark, but we'll double check just in case I might get electrocuted. Because you folks like seeing that. Cheese and rice. <laughs> By the power of Grayskull! Ouch! Yep, it's got spark. Let's do it again. Ah! I don't know why it's shocking me. Son of a biscuit. All kinds of spark. So we just need the, the gasolina. And there should be gas. Pumping up here? It's moist in the carburetor. Let's choke it. See what happens. Oh, she wants to go. I did see a bunch of mouse house come out of the manifold on my side, so clearly there were some in that manifold. There shouldn't have been any in the engine because we just had the manifolds off. I clearly didn't look in the manifold when we had it off, but anyway. She runs pretty good. Like I said, I stored this thing properly and it's been sitting for a fair amount of years and lit right off, didn't mess with the carburetor. All we did is flick the points, clean up some spark plugs. Yeah, small block Chevys, they just want to live. I was a little bit leery about the starter because we didn't do anything with that. Well, we didn't do anything with this starter. We're working on white lighting starter, but should have messed with that a little bit. But we did check out the uh, generator. So now I guess it's pretty much just put the generator on it, uh, tidy everything up up here, figure out a throttle linkage. I don't know what they had going on there. Clearly it's going to be different between the two barrel that we have now and the four barrel that they had before. So Ow. we got to figure out a little bit of wiring, maybe a battery hold down, figure out a radiator. But yeah, we're getting there. This thing's running for the first time in close to 50 years. The nearest I can tell from that mark on the starter was 1974. So that's 49 freaking years this thing's been parked. So I'm going to go round up some parts and see if we can't get this thing a little bit closer. Oh, yeah. We need a seat to go. Ouch. Don't hit your head on that, you goof. We need a seat so we can go for an RID. How's your head? Oh, my gosh. We need to get you a helmet. 
Well, we're taking a break from the regularly scheduled 38 Ford because it's so nice and wet out. And uh, we got word that some local people were crushing stuff. So we're gonna load up the back half of a 55, I believe, Chevrolet two-door by hand because the skid steer blew a hose, apparently. So uh, here we are, should be fun. You gonna lift it on there? Don't tell me I need a smashed up 55 race car. Tons of race cars out here. Mostly Chevelles and the like, unfortunately. But uh, they're no bueno anymore. There's our back half. Let's see if we can't pop a tire. How heavy is that thing gonna be, Duff? Guess we're gonna find out. Yep, there's a Chevelle over there too. And there's a Bobcat with a blown hose. An old power wagon. There's a 56 Ford wagon. 57 Chevy Ford. That's a 442 Cutlass right there, unfortunately. Square body. Bunch of junk. Great day to be a duck. Follow me for more tips on how to use up the end of your ratchet strap. Most importantly, if you do that, you gotta say, that ain't going nowhere. Well, not bad, six minutes and 20 seconds from the time I fired the camera up. So not bad. Look at how crude this 55 is here. The cage, sketchy. I guess it was better than nothing. Can't even use these doors because they gutted them, cut all the inner structure out of them. It was basically a skin. That'd be a cool wall hanger. Ain't a lot holding it. Looks like they wrapped the chain around it to pick it off. Got a three quarter ton full floater rear end in it. Race car things. Yeah, this was a four speed. 442. Actually, it's just the two. The hump is still on the floorboards in there. There's a pink 55 four door. Oh, that was a two door wagon, unfortunately. I wonder how the driver's door is. The 56 Ford wagon has a four door as well. Oh, I mean, it's a door. I don't know if these B pillars are the same or not. Is a uh, Sedan looks like somebody started doing some Bondo work on there. Yeah, there's a I don't know like a 68.9 Buick wagon over here I guess that Firebird Trans Amps like a 73 was super dry when they cut it up to use a race body for a race car Some little Honda CVC Yeah This Buick probably was a pretty good car too Like a 64 Pontiac Look at the wheel on that thing freaking monstrous Another race car. What's that? 66 7 Chevelle. Another four door 57 race car. Chevelle race car. Another wagon over there. Another Tri 5 four door. Cute little jail bar tow truck. There's a bunch of other stuff out here, but we didn't get it. So now I guess we're going to have to do a two door Tri 5 conversion. Just need to find some doors. Maybe we'll come back for that door. Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. Passenger door is right there just wrapped around a lot of this stuff got pretty beat up because i think it was getting shoved around with that big old volvo over there whoops what is that oh it's a magnet huh that's pretty neat how neat is that never seen one of them hydraulic powered all right duff thanks for the help let's see if we can't get backed out of here and not get a flat tire until we get home at least Sad seeing this stuff get crushed. Can't save them all. We're doing what we can. That's why tri fives are so expensive and Chevelles and Camaros, because they all got made into freaking race cars. Well, we're back in the shop, and it's uh, it's wet out there, isn't it, stinky dog? 
Yeah. You wet, stinky puppy. But look what I found in my stash. I think we got this this spring at the Art Olson Swap Meet in Fargo for uh, 40 bucks. I think I even got him down to like 25 or something. But set up for a small block. I think it's for like a 35 to 40 Ford. It's got a AC condenser on it. In case you want to put AC in this small block. But where these mounting tabs go, they got this terrible, ugly bracketry thing right here. So we're going to nip the C-Dazers that thing off so we can get at the mounting holes and uh, see if we get some radiator hoses on this thing. Definitely should have cut this off on the end of the bill. tall maybe not. The holes don't line up but we can always drill new holes what I'm gonna do is clamp this thing in place and we're gonna mock the grill up and a couple other things just to see if it's gonna clear before we do any work actually physically mounting this thing because I hate to do all that work and find out it's not gonna clear our hood or our grill those, those are uh, critical aspects of this build Already running into some clearance issues. I think she's got to go back. That's what we need right there. I'm going to take this condenser off because, let's be honest, we're not going to put AC and that's going to give us a little bit more clearance because it's actually the condenser that's touching this grill shell. And then we'll be able to scoot it ahead a little bit. That'll give us more room for a fan and then we'll get a little bit more uh, options for radiator hoses so we don't have to run the old silly flexi hoses that were on before, eh? That was a good swap meet purchase. You never know when you might need this junk. And if you're wondering why I take that fender loose, it's because I can't sneak the grill in there with the fenders bolted in place. You gotta put the grill in and then suck the fenders in. So now you know. bit of mocking up here I got the grill in place that you saw I just set the hood on to make sure that was gonna clear the radiator and I tell you what this thing is looking real nice really nice you kind of got to run the hood sides on these things in my opinion because then you get you see the radiator if they just stopped right here it'd be okay but this is kind of ugly in here you can run them without hood sides but I just don't like the way they look in these things but man does that thing ever look cool with the hood on it can't wait to get some hood sides on it and some headlights in there, and I think these uh, push bars are going to have to go as well. Maybe we can scrounge up a factory-style bumper. But anyway, yeah, ready to mount that radiator. We're going to have to get a little bit smaller fan, figure out some hoses, all that good stuff. The fan is just a little bit too big. It's an 18-inch fan, and it's probably going to hit the lower radiator hose. So we're going to have to do something there. But we got options. All right. Ready to start drilling. I didn't want to drill holes in that radiator until I was sure everything was going to work. And I'm still not sure, but I'm sure enough. All right, digging through our hose stash. Not having a whole lot of luck. I, I think we kind of got an idea, but I came up with another brilliant, brilliant idea. You see how this water pump lines up about right there? And the center of the radiator is right there. Well, it's about five inches difference. So there's a couple companies, Zips is the one that I've heard of that's currently in production. Makes a water pump riser 
and uh, the zips I think is uh, utilizing the like a 235 or 216 Chevy water pump and there's an old one I don't think they're in business anymore maybe they are Snow White LTD out of Fresno, California. Picked this up at a swap meet. Paid real money. Look at that. 100 bucks. I'm sure I beat him up and got it for 60. But this uses an Opal water pump and does the same thing. It raises it up five and a half inches from that center line to that center line. So we're going to mock that up. I guess all we're really out is a little bit of time and some gaskets. And we'll see if that makes it any better. Because the one thing that that will gain us, other than putting the fan in the center of the radiator, it's going to gain us some clearance between the fan blade and the low radiator neck. It'll also maybe give us some uh, more options for a rad meter hose so that we don't have to use one of the dreaded flexi hoses. We can use one of the formed hoses because that uh, fan blade gets real tight to that neck. So if we move it up five inches, it should have all kinds of clearance. All the clearance, Clarence, so. Two four. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Let's take that water pump off and we'll go from there. Please don't snap. Oh, come on. I don't know if that one's been out since 1965. There we go. Probably gonna want to clean that one up before we reuse it. All right, even if we don't use that old water pump or the Snow White pump, we're gonna have to clean these up. So, good time to utilize the old super scraper here. Get them cleaned up so they're ready to go for some new gaskets. Get your super scraper at Mordski.com. We got hot knife through butter. So we've already run into our first snag here. Not only is the bolt pattern different, but the pilot hole is a different size. So we're going to have to go dig through our pulley stash and see what we can do there. Because this is going to have too much offset as well. I don't know what pulley we need to use here. And I'm sure we can't find any information on these Snow White installation kits on the interwebs. It looks like somebody did a little grind in there. Hopefully they didn't go too far. Otherwise, we're going to have to do a little aluminum welding. But overall, pretty dang nice piece. We just need the instructions. And that is a steal at 100 bucks because I think the Zips ones are like 300 350 You can get them from Speedway Motors now. And I like the aluminum water pump look as opposed to the uh, cast steel Chevrolet 216, 235 water pump. But they're probably easier to get those water pumps than an Opal. Your uh, local O'Reilly's or Advance or Napa probably isn't going to have an Opal water pump on hand. All right, on to the next debacle. Not only do we have to change the pilot hole diameter and the bolt pattern for the fan, uh, we also need to change the offset because if we reamed this one out, it would hit our water pump. So... Good thing I got a tote full of pulleys. No idea what this guy's off of. It's got a really small diameter, so that's going to make our fan really zing and our water pump. So good, maybe bad. I mean, you want to have the right fan speed. And then this one is a little bit bigger, but doesn't have quite the right offset we could play around with spacers and stuff but we're gonna do a little figuring see what we can figure out this one might have the right size pilot hole maybe oh, just kidding the other thing is you want to modify your pulley so that it works with your water pump so if your water pump ever fails you just bolt a new water pump on whereas if you modify the water pump drill it out to fit a chevy pulley you're never going to be able to replace it on the side of the road without modifying a new water pump so you got to think of that stuff. Serviceability. You know, engineers don't think of that stuff. That's why I'm no longer an engineer. All right, let's do this. All right, I wasn't able to find any destructions on the old interwebs with the old Snow White water pump riser adapter kit. Uh, but based on the pictures that I could find, it looks like they came with a pulley. And of course, when I bought my 
budget version. It didn't come with a pulley, so we got to ream that center out, and my reamers only go up to three quarter inch, but Mojo said, why don't we use the lathe? So he's chucking her up in the lathe right now, and uh, we're going to ream out that center hole, and then we'll have to figure out the bolt holes after that. Hopefully that pulley that I got is gonna work. The smaller one's the only one we can use because the bigger one hits on the uh, lower radiator hose outlet. So speaking of radiator hose, let's check this out. I took our stock thermostat housing. It's kind of at a little bit of an angle. I got one off of a van, I think is what it's off of, but it sits pretty much vertical like that. And look at that hose, that 20386 Gates fits on there. Freaking phenomenal. So just playing a little, playing around a little bit of this stuff. You don't have to use the old flexi hose. And that was stuff I had laying around this water pump I had laying around. It's gonna take us some work to make it work, but hopefully we can get that low radiator hose figured out as well. Let me show you that. We got a 21034 Gates. That's for a 74 F350. That was an extra that I got for Bernie. And I think what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to cut it there and then we'll just have to put a splice in there. But I think with that a little kick there brings it up. And then if we can rotate it there, we can spin it right over to here. And if we had some more hoses, we could maybe find one that would fit right on there. But I don't, uh, I don't know that I built one with a splice in a long time. But there ain't nothing wrong with that. Just a couple more leak points. But it should be able to figure it out. Still beats a flexi hose. Which technically I guess we could run if we really, really had to. Alright. Let's go check out what Mojo's got going on. Uh-oh. Ain't gonna work? Well, your jaws won't catch the... Out of here? The one you got in there? We need a different... We need a bigger set of jaws? Yeah. Longer. Oh, they gotta be longer right here, that steps? Yeah. Catch here. Oh, dang man. I just slipped that out by it. We need to try it. Mm -hmm. Professionals don't use the three jaw chucks, right? Hey, hey! How about that, Skippy? Yeah, it might work. Yeah. But then how are we gonna get it? Is it gonna be too far in there? This thing's gonna be spinning like 11,000 RPMs. The engine, plus this is gonna be spinning twice as fast. So 22,683 RPMs. So we, we gotta make this real precise. Really gonna be hanging out on the edge, ain't we? Yeah. Not exactly ideal, is it? Well, not real good, no. What do they say, good enough for government work? Well. <laughs> Let me crank on that guy. You're no vicious. It needs some lubrication. Yeah. It's because you don't use it often enough. It just collects dust around here. You just put your electric impact on the end of that. Yeah, 916s. Yeah. Didn't you lose that not one day? Yeah, I think that was you. Hard on equipment. So where are we going to? All the way to the middle? Well, to the middle and the center. I don't think it still ain't gonna go. Gonna do her. You wanna get in there? Far enough? We're already touching it now. So I got some inside boring. Well that you can just Put in here and go. That should. That would work better too. Well, and then isn't that far edge of the tool gonna cut catch, or that bottom lip of the tool gonna want to catch before the, the well, well, tip? That's. It's really not made for inside boring. But I gotta. I got a tool that'll... You got a tool for that. Tool for that, cutting the inside. And it just goes right in there. On here. Mine is the same setup. Same hourglass. Well, the other thing we can do is I don't need this inside pulley, inside groove. So we can take that off there if we got to, to open it up. But you bring them with after lunch. Yeah. We need 975 and we're at 665.
We got our hub, bore, right where she needs to be. But the hits just keep on coming. Now the second groove is hitting on the uh, water pump inlet, outlet, what have you. Uh, we only need the front groove anyway, so let's machine that back groove off real quick. It's like riding a bike. I never was any good at uh, riding a bike or doing lathe work, so practice makes perfect. These things are pretty fun if you can get one cheap. This here, I think it's a 636, 836. She's an Atlas. And yeah, we use the, don't use it that much, but when we do, it's handy. So I gotta take this second groove off this pulley. Okay. What's a good way to do that? Got it in here. How far you want to go into that? Yeah, you know, to like, <coughs> to like right there. Okay. Can we just go like that? Yeah, I would just go right into. So don't, so cut it right there? About there, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. See if I can screw it up. You got the center right, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that tool works pretty good. I'm gonna have to get one of them. Well. Or you can just leave that one here. I can leave it. <laughs> Have it. I ought to turn a two groove pulley into a single groove pulley. Nobody died, Mojo. Well, good. Look at that. Almost looks like we knew what we were doing. All right, now let's go see if we got the clearance. We need clearance. Let's put all our tooling back. Don't worry, we'll definitely come clean up that mess. Oh, the elves do that after hours. By golly, you better have clearance. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Do our bolt holes line up? Not a chance. All right, I guess that's next on the list. Let's use our straight edge here to see how close we are on our belt alignment. We're off a little bit, but I think it'll run. Yeah, I would say we're off by a good quarter inch. But we can always space that bottom crank pulley out. We can do a lot of things. This is going to work. First thing we got to do is get this sort of bolt on that water pump. Well, there you can see it, it just barely catches the edge of the existing holes. So, we're going to have to drill some new holes. Perfect. All right, the hits, they just keep on coming with the old Snow White water pump. I would recommend getting the zips. Probably because they're still available. I don't know if Snow White is or not, but I'm guessing that you can use a GM fan and pulley. We'll have to look into it. So the next thing is, if we drill that out, we're gonna have to also drill out our fan, which we can ream out the center, not a big deal. That's easy enough, probably, maybe. But we don't have a lot of options for drilling holes. We'd have to go out this direction. So I think what we're gonna do is just drill and tap the old opal water pump flange. Partly because it's metric threads, which I do have metric bolts, so that ain't such a big deal. But if this goes out on the side of the road somewhere, odds are whoever we're getting this thing from or wherever it breaks down is not gonna have an opal water pump on hand. So if we're gonna be sitting around twiddling our thumbs waiting for an opal water pump, we can just drill and tap said opal water pump. And really, all you need is a drill. You can use the pulley as a uh, alignment tool and then just a regular hand tap. So not a big deal. Just hopefully we don't screw up this flange when we do it. Like break it or anyway, we'll be real careful. But yeah, that's what we're going to do. And then we can drill it to 5 16 fine thread like small black Chevys should be. Real headache here, old Snow White. We need them seven dwarves to take care of this problem for us. That'd be real handy. There's one silly dwarf living down in Oklahoma. I guess if I was a dwarf, I'd probably be grumpy. According to him, real angry, but it's when I gotta do stuff like this that I get grumpy. Just kidding, I'm always grumpy. All right, 
one down, three more to go. All right, after most of a day messing around with this thing, uh, we're nowhere. We got a fan mounted, but the fan gets in the way of the belt. So we're gonna have to space it out. So we're gonna have to modify a spacer to fit that pilot. The saga with Snow White continues. Electric fans and electric uh, water pumps seem like a viable option at this point, don't they? Those cost money and uh, they're not traditional and they fail more often and they're annoying to listen to, most annoying sound in the world. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? So, now we'll modify a spacer. And have to go find a different fan blade because I reamed this one out. Son of a biscuit. After a whole bunch of messing around, we made some progress. We got our generator mounted. We got our belt tensioned up. Let's take a look. So I found this chrome adjustment bracket. I'd like to modify it a little bit. It's got a little tab on there. I want to either cut off or make it used lies that other bolt down there. Uh, our belt alignment's pretty good. Had to run to town, pick up a belt because I didn't have one that long. But yeah, radiator hoses are all pretty much done. I took a piece of exhaust pipe from that uh, little Nissan pickup we took down to Puddins and did that little competition. Use that to splice these two radiator hoses together so we don't have to use a flexi hose. Cap that heater hose off. Yeah, everything's uh, looking pretty good here. Even hooked up our sending unit for our temp center. Cross fingers that this doesn't leak, that doesn't leak, that doesn't leak. No leaks. It's going to be fine. But now we're on to the foot feet. Foot feet, foot feed. I guess that came when they went from lever throttles to foot throttles. Anyway, foot feed. The problem is, here's where the gas pedal sits in the right hand side of the carburetor is where the linkage was on the flathead. It's on the left hand side of this engine. I stole this out of a jail bar Ford 46.7 cab that I had laying out back. Pretty much the same thing as what this pickup would have had. I couldn't find one that came with this vehicle. So we're gonna have to modify this so that it comes out on the same side of the engine or else make a bunch of linkage. And I don't think we can use a bunch of linkage because the distributor is going to hit where this comes through the firewall originally. So you can see that's the hole where this guy comes through. And then if you shift over to where this would come through the firewall, it's going to be right over on the edge of that distributor. So that's going to be in the way. So pretty much what we got to do is find a way to mount this and then cut this guy off and put this guy on there. And there's that hole that mounts it there. And there's a little clamp that goes over this that holds it in place. So if we mount this onto that, it's going to screw up with that mounting tab. So it's going to be a whole lot of horsing around for nothing. But yeah, short of doing that, getting some brakes going and filling her up with coolant. We're about ready to go for a ride. Oh yeah, we need a seat, Duff. I don't know where he's at. He's all prettied up. He was at the spa yesterday, but anyway. I'm gonna hack this thing up, see what we can figure out.
So you see we sacrificed two pedals. This one's off of a 36 Ford truck. Pretty much the exact same thing. We had to get that mounting stud off of that one. But yeah, should work good. Just had to have that other mounting stud to locate it because the original mounting tab is not going to be usable anymore because this linkage is coming through the firewall now. We're going to have to do a little bending and modifying and twisting, but that's the beauty of this old forged stuff is you can heat and bend it and twist it around. Forged? Is that what they call it? Instead of cast iron, it's forged iron? Something like that. But anyway, you can heat and bend it. It's pretty cool. Things are starting to fall together around here. Instead of fall apart for once. The throttle went surprisingly well. I got a couple hours into making that foot feet. And the linkage, I just grabbed one that I had on the shelf. It was adjustable. It had the right ends on both ends. I drilled a little bit of Little, little bitty hole for a cotter key to hold it in place. I have a spring off the shell fucked up. It's too big a spring, but I think it's going to work. So yeah, <clears throat> here's this linkage I was talking about. It had the ball and ball and spring type. I don't know, ball and socket with a spring. You four guys know what I'm talking about. And then this end just was just bent rod. I drilled a hole in it to put a cotter key to hold it. The stock GM one would have hooked in here. So I can always make one. Like I said, this is adjusted all the way in, so we can adjust it uh, out further. But if we got to go adjust it in, we're going to have to take this apart and add some more threads. So I did bend the coil bracket ahead just a bit to give us a little bit of clearance. Clearance? Yeah, it's working good. Like I said, this spring is a bit more spring than I care to have on here, but I think it'll work. All right, I'm going to grab some coolant. We're going straight for coolant. Not messing with water. No way any of this is going to leak. I'm just going right to the coolant because it's that time of year where it freezes in the evening. We're going to dump some coolant in there. And uh, yeah, I already got a seat in there. Tested out my pedal. Works great. It's a little tippy around corners, I'm guessing. But yeah, look at that pedal. All basically stockish. Real nice. Look at that. Freaking fancy. All right, let's put some coolant in it. I did plug the pet cock hole in that other mystery half inch MPT hole, so hopefully we're good. Let's check to make sure the pet cock's tight though. It is. These are handy dandy filler adapter thing right here. What is this thing? The spill proof funnel kit by Epalo. These things are so good, I can't say enough about them. Not a paid promotion, they're just worth the investment. Cheap tool that you'll never regret buying. No puddles yet. Chin's like, you think that radiator's gonna hold water? There's 40 bucks at a swab meeting. <laughs> well, yeah, if it leaked, why would they be selling it? They'd have thrown it away. People don't do that at swab meets, do they? Try to sell junk? And I told them, don't talk about it that way. And don't talk good about it. Happy thoughts. Maybe there's a happy tree. Evergreen tree. He lives right there. And no way this system only holds not even a gallon and a half. I don't believe that. Not for one second. I feel like if we had a leak, we would have known by now. So, pretty excited about that. Chin, you owe me a six pack. Let's see if I can't fish this plug out of this. Oh, we got coolant right there in the water pump. So it's full up to there from that side. And we got coolant there on that side. Maybe this thing only holds. A little over a gallon. I guess we got a temper gauge that we can keep an eye on. What's the beauty of those mechanical gauges? You don't even need to have them wired up. They just work. Oh man, we should have an oil pressure gauge. This thing's gonna be so fancy. This thing's got more gauges than most of the stuff we drive daily. All right, I guess uh, let's hook a battery up. So we can't get this thing running again. Maybe that'll 
circulate some water around. That does not seem like enough. How do we lose our fuel pump? Come on, fuel pump. Oh. It's because I had the wrong button on the old, whatever we're calling this thing. The loser box instead of a loser switch. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engaged. It's hard to reach the throttle from this side. That's pretty good timing. Play to that a little bit. That's a lot better. We advanced it a bunch counterclockwise. Look at that 40 pounds oil pressure at idle. So good. Look at that leaking from our new fitting. Not so good. All right, we're uh, we're just gonna plug this. It's a small block. We know it's got oil pressure. I don't know what's going on there, but we got a leak, and I don't feel like messing with it because it's that time of the day where I'm ready to start enjoying some adult beverages. And I hate dealing with tiny little pieces of hardware, so we're just gonna put a plug in it. That's all. I don't know what happened. But yeah, we over tightened it trying to get it to leak or not leak. So who knows? We'll try again sometime. Would have been good to know this before we put the coil back on and the distributor and everything else, but oh well. That's the way she goes. Stick an eighth inch pipe plug in here and carry on with our lives. Okay, no more leak and no more oil pressure gauge. So, two problems solved. Just kidding. Oh, we should probably hook up our Galdang generator, right? Maybe? Yeah, let's do that. Why not? And it did take a little bit more coolant, so that's good. Yeah, we're getting uh, ready to take it for a test drive here shortly. If you don't know how to hook these generators up like me just look at it f is for field uh, that's the red wire and then you look at this guy over here and the red wire and it should be labeled what it is but it should say field there's a little tiny f there good to go the wire and our nice little hooks and our valve cover just like factory. Probably don't hook this up with the battery hooked up, but we're not real bright. But that's why that stack of washers is on there, because there's a strip spot on that stud. Good thing we just had this generator all apart to go through it, and we didn't put a new stud on it. Dagnam it. Good thing we got an abundance of crappy washers laying around this place. This is why I never finish a project, because I get to this point and uh, the attention to detail goes out the door. Next thing you know, you're stacking up star washers to make it so you can test drive it. Good enough for the girls we go with. Mojo had a generator laying in his stash that he wasn't going to ever use, so we stole the hardware from him. Well, he brought it out here and dropped it off, so I didn't really steal it, but 
he gave it to me and I stole this nut off of it. It pays to have junk around. Of course the stud was good on that one too so we should have stole a stud out of it. But not today. All right. I wonder if the amp gauge is hooked up. Guess we'll find out. Squeeze your hose, make a little room. This is the old butt plug in there. No spillage. Okay, a couple drips. My bad. Guess I gotta go find a radiator cap. Brand new 16 pounder, that ought to do. Alright. Do I even try bleeding the brakes? I don't know. We got three speed. What do we need brakes for? Oh yeah, because first is not synchronized, so that'll be ugly. Well, before we do any ripping around the yard, we got to get everything out of the bed here or put a tailgate on. So definitely going to get stuff out of the bed because I don't feel like mounting a tailgate. So we're going to have to find homes for all this good stuff. Hood sides, hood. So we can put the floor pan in it. Bonus air cleaners, all that stuff. So let's get that stashed away. All right, bed's all pretty much empty. I'm sure those straps are just gonna hold that fuel tank right in place. We're missing a beauty ring and some hubcaps. And look what I found. Yeah, the old Deluxes, 44 Deluxe. Those are gonna look good. Look at that old newspaper, what's the date on it? April 3rd, 1980. These things have been waiting to go on here for 43 years. Also, it's not the right beauty ring. It's just got that one rib. We need these ones with multiple ribs, but good enough for the girls we go with. Let's see if they fit. All right, thank you. Oh, very nice. Duff, how'd the spa day go? You look pretty good. Well, you looked a lot better about 48 hours ago, but. Anywho, we got our air cleaner on. It's just touching the radiator hose, so we need a little bit smaller one or to clearance that one. But yeah, it even uh, runs from the old ignition switch and push button in here. Drives forward and backwards. Grab myself a Camaro seat. Looks like our door handle is gonna need some work because that's what I had. It needs to sit higher. I just need the right seat, but to find a seat that's 85 years old is a little, little difficult, but this will be good enough for the girls we go with. Duff is going to just have to stand up and pretend like he enjoys it. Not going to be many nice days like this left this year, so. Anyway, let's get all saddled up. Take this thing for a rip around the yard. Right, Duff? Go for a ride? Oh, yeah. We love the rides, don't we? You going to drive? No thumbs. All right. Yeah, I know. You don't have much of a seat, but mine isn't much better. You'll be fine. All right. Reverse is left and up. Ignition on. Slingshot engage. It does run good. It's loud, though.
this not the synchronized transmission? Yeah, I don't think it's the double D to 39 box that we were hoping for. the steam hey kids <laughs> bet you didn't think you were gonna be on the YouTubes today nope. you with the uh, Yellowstone Ranch yes you're a big deal so I, I think I think there's an issue there I wouldn't get too close to that give them your plug no, don't I'm not looking good today they won't buy it then. <laughs> <laughs> buy the Jets Up Ranch decal so that so that we can get Mrs. Pookie the, the plastic surgery she requires Thank you. <laughs> Finally chased off Mrs. Pookie and his sister. I don't know what it is about 38 Ford pickups. The ladies just flock to the shop. But as you can see, we got some fenders bolted on. I set the tailgate in place. Set the hood sides, the hood top all in there. This thing is looking pretty dang sharp. We got to do some body work on the fenders. We got to put a bunch more bolts in the hood. We got to find the headlights. Uh, we got to find some bumpers because push bars just ain't really uh, cut it for me. We're just take the push bars off and take the bumper brackets off. We got a lot of work. We got to do exhaust. We got to do brakes. We got to do a seat. But 
This thing's pretty good. I did put about a gallon of coolant in it, so I think that was our issue. I'm sure the 283 love being nuclear just helped the ring seat a little bit better. But anyway, let's uh, take a look at this thing. And uh, then we'll uh, kick her outside and wrap this video up. I don't know what else we can do. Oh yeah, we gotta get a fuel tank. We gotta order some parts. Duff is just uh, tuckered out. We gotta get going, because uh, the local football team is ranked number one in the state and it's the first playoff game today so we're gonna go attend that but anyway left rear fender pretty good and uh, needs a little bit of work a little crack down there a couple of dents and uh we gotta put a brace on there we're missing one of the hinges for the tailgate the tail tailgate's pretty rough shape i'm not sure that's the right tailgate but i i think it is with that v8 script ruski on there there's the hinge we're missing this fender not so good passenger side is always worse because i don't know if people can't see over there and they just back into things but we got to do a little straightening a little bit of welding patch some holes she's cracked out pretty good got a bolter to the fender yet but yeah it ain't it ain't too bad she looks good with the hood like i said the push bars just ain't cutting it for me i think they got to go and we got to find they must be a sealed beam conversion so we'll have to figure out something there but yeah i think that's where we're gonna leave her we're gonna roll her outside and uh get some photos for the old thumbnail and uh instagram maybe crack a sandwich and enjoy it and, uh like i said then we gotta go to the football game probably shouldn't have a sandwich before we go to a high school football game i guess it wouldn't be the first time but we're, not, we're not gonna get obliterated or anything just one just a celebratory sandwich and then after they kick some butt today the old sergeant county bulldogs maybe we'll uh, have a couple more so uh there you have it thank you very much for watching i am super excited about this 38 ford uh old hot rod that we got on an online auction that stuff is still out there halstead minnesota who'd have thought there'd been something cool out there we still got to go through that original 283 we got plenty of work to do to this pickup but it's super solid it's it's a great pickup. If you want to own this thing, price and availability in the description. It ain't going to be cheap because where are you going to find an 85-year-old pickup with a small block in it that's in this good of shape? So hit us up, mortskiperagmail.com. Also, check out the merch, mortski.com. We don't have sweatshirts yet. We're working on it. You can get caps. You can get air fresheners. You can do banners. We got keychains. We got screwdrivers. We got the magnetic can koozies that uh, we're gonna enjoy sandwiching here shortly if I can find it. Oh yeah, we got the uh, crown magnetic can koozies. Get yours at mortski.com. So thank you very much for watching. Check out our other videos, like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Very much appreciated for myself and the Duffel All right, on to the next one. But remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. Early hot rods, early Fords, Small block Chevy swaps, fun stuff. Snow white water pumps, ugh, not so fun. We did get to use our lathe though, so there's that. What are we gonna work on next? Are we just gonna go watch high school football games for the next month, Duff? Hopefully they win so we can go to a few more. Push, for, uh, push, 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 push